Good evening, Somers, and welcome to the Somers Town Board work session, uh, Thursday, November 7th, 2019. If you would please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, and be seated. Okay, our, there's no roll call or anything, is there? No. Okay. So the uh, first item on our town board agenda tonight is the Census 2020. Uh, with us this evening is Norma Drummond. She's the Commissioner of Planning for Worcester County. And she has some important information that uh, we all need to hear about the upcoming census. So Norma. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for having me here this Good evening. evening. So I am Norma Drummond. I'm the Commissioner of Planning for Westchester County. Um, and I'm here to talk about Census 2020. We are 145 days away from April 1st, which is Census Day. So um, there are some issues that we've identified in Westchester County, certainly. Oh, oh, I can do it from there. Thank That's you. That's the census. That might have been like January 1st. Yeah. So I would hit the right side. Of the yeah, me too. Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. So now I don't need to hold this because I'm Italian. Oh, I talk yeah, with my yeah. hands. Okay. <laughs> you can see it here. For what that's worth, guys. I, oh, I like you. So just don't be an arm distance of me because I, I <laughs> so anyway, the census is coming. This is the United States' 24th census. We are not new to the census business. Um, the census is mandated in the U.S. Constitution. The first census was conducted in 1790. So again, it's not new. Um, one of the main reasons people think of the fact that we do the census is because it does, in fact, re um, affect the number of seats that New York State has in Congress. There are a total of 435 seats in Congress that are distributed across the United States. New York has lost seats in the past. And so it's important for New York State as a whole to make sure we get our total population. But more importantly to most municipal governments is the fact that according to a George Washington Institute of Policy report from December of 2018, census data is used for the distribution of $880 billion a year of federal funds. In fact, the Census Bureau estimates that every person that is not counted is a loss of approximately $2,500 a year to the local municipalities. Westchester to the county and to the municipality. $2,500 a year for one person. That means just 400 people not getting counted is a million dollars a year, a loss. Locally, for the, certainly for the uh, town of Somers, is the concern that your share of the county sales tax is based on 2010 population estimate with what the actual number and so for the, the last 10 years you've been living with that 2010 number now we're not concerned that your 2010 number was undercounted but after the 2010 census and the results came out there were certainly a couple municipalities in Westchester where we were saying whoa those numbers are not right um, village of Portchester for one the village of Ossining is uh, as a second so we are really concerned that with the issues that are around now that there is more of a likelihood of this of uh, not getting an accurate count. So we are certainly concerned and that's one of the reasons that I am making it out to as many municipalities as I can. You are my fifth presentation this week. All right. So it is definitely important enough for me to get out every night this week to have that conversation. So what is new for the 2020 census? First and foremost, everybody thinks of the census and you think of that form that comes in the mail. You are not going to get a form in the mail. Census 2020 will be the first census that you will be responding online. You, will be, you can respond on your smartphone, or you can respond by tell, answering, calling somebody on the telephone. You can call the Census Bureau if you don't have that computer access and you'll be able. You will get a letter in the mail with an invitation to respond to the census. Most people don't realize that, and again, that's why I have to start getting out and making sure people know what to expect. 
Think about it, you've been working all day long, you get home, you're going through the mail, you see all these letters, you don't know who they are, but they're not your bill, you know, your normal regular bills, you just toss them in, in the garbage. We don't want people in the middle of March or, or early April to take those letters and to toss them in the mail. And in fact, I will tell you right now, by April 1st, you will have gotten three letters from the Census Bureau if you don't respond. So again, there's a whole plan about how they're going to get people to get the information they need to respond to the census, but we've got to start letting people know about that. Also new for this census is the fact that the Census Bureau itself will now have greater ability to talk to your neighbors and to talk to building managers about how many people live in that housing unit if in fact they cannot get an answer and who who's, lives there. Okay, if they've been knocking on the door and nobody answers, they are allowed to ask neighbors how many people live in that home. What they're trying to get at is making sure they're counting all the vacant units. All right, vacant units are certainly important in our census. They are also allowed to talk, the Census Bureau is allowed to talk to other government departments to get access to their records, Social Security, to HUD Housing and Urban Development. Um, they are allowed to get those records, but I want to be very clear, the information cannot be shared both ways. The Census Bureau is not allowed to share any information that they collect with any other federal department. The census itself is going to ask nine questions. The census survey, that's it. What's your name? Where do you live? Do you rent or, or own your own home? Um, what, how old are you? Are you male or female? What's, or what's your sex? The, what's your relationship to the person number one who responded to the census for your household? Spouse, child, uh, sister, whatever it is, it doesn't matter, and even no relationship. If you're just roommates, you can actually answer that there's no relationship. Um, and are you, uh, what is your race, what is your ethnicity? The citizenship question has been blocked by the courts this year, so that question was knocked out. But again, previous censuses, these same 10 questions have been asked with that citizenship question in there. So again, there's only nine questions. Um, but the important thing for people to understand is that the Census Bureau has actually be, been working on Census 2020 since 2011. This is not just they come into being every 10 years. There's a lot of work that has to get done in getting the census ready for the collection of data. Imagine all the technology alone that had to get developed to be able to answer on your smartphone and to be able to, um, put, to, be able to use the computer to respond. But many people also think of the Census Bureau as, as other surveys that they conduct. They do a lot of economic development surveys, they do the Census of Jails, and their most popular one is the ACS or the American Community Survey data. That's where they, they survey about 300 households across the country every month, um, we're asking a whole broad band of questions, and th the reason I'm mentioning this is because some people are still getting these surveys on a monthly basis, and so we want to make sure that if you get an ACS or an American Community Survey survey, that you do respond to that survey in addition to the normal Census 2020 survey that you may get. The problem with the ACS uh, data is that it's at, because they're only surveying 300,000 Pop, pop, households um, a month, it's not 100% of the count of everybody in the country as the census itself is. And so what they have to do is they actually aggregate five years worth of data and average it out to get us the information that we need at a, at a level that where the data is somewhat usable. So the, the data is not really reliable. Um, and it, it has raised some concerns where the margin of error sometimes is that frankly larger than the number itself. But again, ACS and the American Community Survey are continuing in case people do get households. I had somebody when I was at Hastings on Tuesday night that said, oh, I got a survey in the mail. Is this the, the census? We're like, no, 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 census is not out yet, but please respond to your ACS uh, survey as well. I do want to start with basic census geography because I think it will help people understand how important or in, and, and how confidential your information will stay. So in the center of the screen, we have a block. And if I were to walk out the door, and it works better at some municipal halls than yours sometimes, but if I were to walk out, the, out, your, out your door here, make a right at the corner, go to the next block, make a right again, eventually I'd arri arrive back at the front door. That is a block. But the person who would live across the street from you lives in another block. And in the example that I actually give up on the screen there, where I use Glen Ridge Road at the top, the next level of geography is a block group. And the person who lives opposite me on Glen Ridge Road 
actually would be in another block group, which makes it impossible for anybody to be able to determine what was your household which was versus which was mine. So the block groups, which is the lowest level of data that HUD will release, they never release any data at a block level, so the lowest level of group has an optimum size of about 1,500 people. Again, impossible to identify any household when there's 1,500 people in there. But it could have anywhere from 600 to 3,000 people in a block group. CDBG, if you're the Community Development Block Grant, that, that data is released at, on the block group level. Um, but the next level of geography is the census tracts, and we have almost 200 census tracts in Westchester County alone. A census tract has between 1,200 and 8,000 people and an optimum size of about 4,000 people. So again, most data is released at the census tract level. Some data is released at the block root level. But when you're talking about four to 8,000 people in a census tract, you really are not, I, no household is identifiable. So census tracts begin, their, their numbering, every county has their own numbering systems for census tracts. They actually begin in the lower part of the county and they work their way north. This is my number one reason why I'm here and my concern. I, there will be another a little bit later, but this is number one. In the summer of 2018, well, let me start by saying the county planning department is a census affiliate. So we work actively with the Census Bureau to help them get ready for the census. And we answer all sorts of questions. We um, are, a, are a regular area where people can call us to, for information and for help using census data. So in the summer of 2018, my staff reviewed addresses <coughs> for the Census Bureau. And, and governments all across the country were doing this last summer as well. So um, this was a major effort. We did it on behalf of a number of municipalities uh, in the county. We reviewed a total of 370,000 housing addresses. There are officially in Westchester County 345,885 units. We found addresses for 24,000 more housing units than there is an official count for in this county. If that doesn't worry you, it worries me. 24,000, some, some of them will be empty, but even just one person in each of those units is the difference between Westchester County being under a million people and being over a million people. That's huge. All right, and so it actually made us go, at the county planning department made us go and say, whoa, which municipalities are not reporting their building permits? Because that is certainly where the, census, that's where the Census Bureau gets their numbers of counts. And in, real, and in fact, we found that there were seven municipalities that were not complying and not submitting the monthly surveys of building permits of residential permits. Two of them were large cities. One was a large town. Two of them, three of them were large villages. So that raised a red flag for us that we actually, it was so, you know, it was so important to us that we, in the month of October, we actually hosted four trainings for the local municipalities to help them understand why are, they, why are the, these surveys important, why are the, how do they do them, and what is the data used for. And so we had more than half of the municipalities in Westchester actually attend. Five of the seven who were not reporting have already attended. We've already um, got reached out to both of the other two, so we really have to make sure every municipality in Westchester um, does respond well. So again, my concern number one is the fact that we found 24,000 more addresses. Now, along the lines of confidentiality, I am not allowed to tell the town of Somers or any other municipality what addresses I reviewed and found in your town. I, we're sworn to confidentiality. We are not allowed to share that information. So, but you know, what we can say is there's basements and there's attics and there's, you know, there's first floors and second floors and whether they're legal or not, we don't care. The Census Bureau doesn't care. You will care. But again, I can't share that information with you. One of the other things, there's a lot of stuff that we do behind the scenes. One of the other things that we have to do is called BAS, or the Boundary and Annexation Survey data. This on the left is the city of New Rochelle, in the middle is the town of Mamaroneck, and on the right is the village of Larchmont. The blue lines are the boundaries of those three municipalities as the Census Bureau has them defined. The white lines are the real boundaries. So one of the things we had to do was look at boundaries for every municipality across the county to make sure the Census Bureau gets them right because the last thing we want is households in Mamaroneck being counted in the city of New Rochelle and the village of Larchmont actually loses out on literally two layers of two rows of houses that are then getting counted in Mamaroneck town. So we did this for the entire county to make sure that the, um, the boundary lines are accurate. 
Uh, we've also done, behind, again, part of our role with preparing for the census is making sure um, that census tracts don't get too large. The Census Bureau did come to us with a couple census tracts that said they're getting on the large size. Uh, we worked with the local municipalities to see whether they wanted to split them. In most cases, they did not this time around because remember the optimum size is 4,000 people in a census tract, but they can go up to 8,000. So you know the municipalities really want to be able to compare what happened in those, two, in those census tracts from the 2010 census to the 2020. So they d did ask that we not separate them now, but if they get over the 8,000 person limit, then they will have to be separated. And then we worked with um, the town of Newcastle. There's a, a, a designation called Census Designated Places, or CDPs. Um, and this Newcastle had specifically asked if we could break out Millwood and Chappaqua as separately designated places so that they can actually get data and demographic information about the people who live in those two areas. So again, that's another thing that we do behind the scenes. So uh, remember I mentioned we started, Census Bureau started working on census in 2011. Right now, the Census Bureau is in an education phase. We need to get out and tell as many people as possible about, remind them that the census is coming. 145 days away, um, and then let them know what to expect, all right, and at what time, because that's going to be equally important. So uh, the, the, any day now, the Census Bureau and our cens U.S. Census Representative Mario Go Garcia has arrived. He's in the back, so um, if I have, there's any questions that come up that I won't be able to answer, Mario will be able to help me here. Um, but so the Census Bureau is supposed to be releasing what their um, advertising campaign is going to be or, and what, where they're going to be posting information and stuff in Westchester. We're still waiting to see that. Um, so, but the starting in, what the phase that they're in right now is education and they are also recruiting people. So what's the best way to get people counted is to get local people hired to go out and count those people. So we're actually encouraging every municipality to encourage people to apply for the jobs. In Westchester and Putnam alone, they are going to be hiring over 6,200 people. So if anybody's interested, 2020census.gov slash jobs. They are, these are not necessarily nine to five jobs. They are looking for people who can go to people's homes when people are home, nights and weekends. So they really are looking for a, a diverse group of people who are interested in knocking on doors and being able to go and help collect information. There is um, time, a time lag associated with the background check. So again, they're encouraging people to apply now. Training's gonna begin in January and February. And actually the count will begin in January. So it might be a little hard to read on the schedule that I have up here, but starting in January, the Census Bureau will start counting people. They must go to the most remote places of Alaska and Maine where people don't have internet access, they don't have any kind of wireless service, and count, find and count those people. That's not the census counter job I want, that's for sure. All right, but they do have to get out and start counting people. In February, they will start to count what they call group quarters. Group quarters are the prisons, it is the assisted living facilities, the rehab centers that we have, and it is college dorms. All right, for those of us like myself who have college age children, one of, one of my daughters lives in a dorm in Washington, D.C. I will not be able to count any of my four children on my census re return. My oldest son is married. He and his wife live in private housing. They'll fill out their own. My twin daughters are 26. They're both graduate students, but they live in private housing. They, all have, they each have their own apartment. They will respond as part of their own households because they have roommates. And so when they respond, they have to, they'll be answering when, on that question about what's your relationship to person number one, they'll respond, no relationship. But my youngest daughter is 19, she's a, a college student down in Washington, D.C. The school will respond for her because she lives in a group quarter, she lives in a dorm. So, so children who are still in school and living in dorms do not have to respond. However, Westchester Community College students who don't, they don't have dorms at Westchester Community College. Westchester Community College students who come home and put their head on a pillow at night should be responded and counting wherever it is that they lay their head at night. So, all right, so again, the counts will begin in January um, and then the, the, uh, the, question, the group quarters will begin in February. 95% of households in the country will get a letter in the middle of March with an invitation to respond they will not get a form sent to them in the mail. 
All right, another 5% are live in somewhat remote areas. They will, in fact, 5% of the population will get a form delivered to them by a census taker because they don't necessarily have an actual, uh, they might more have more of a post office address, as a, po a rural route address, as opposed to a physical street address. Um, and then the last 1% are those really, really remote areas up in um, Alaska and Maine. So starting on March 12th, the Census Bureau is going to start sending out mailings. So again, mailing number one, March 12th, is a letter with a code for your housing unit. The person who lives across the street is gonna have a different code. The person who lives in the attic apartment is gonna have a different code. Each housing unit will have a different distinguishable code. If you throw out the, co if you throw out the, the letter and the code, you can still respond to the census. You'll just have to answer a couple additional questions because they have to figure out how they can, they have to identify you as being in the housing unit that you belong in. Um, but again, we need to tell people to not throw out these letters because it will be so much easier to respond if they have that code. So M March 12th, the first letter goes out. March 16th, letter number two goes out. March 26th, a postcard will go out. And if, if I didn't keep my letters in the mail, I really throw out the postcards in my, in my mail when I get home at night because they're trying to sell me tires or whatever, plumbing services. So, and then April 8th, the fourth mailing will be the first time a form will go out to you. April 8th is the first time a form will actually go out. So the best advice I can give to people, and if you don't respond to that, by the way, then the middle of April, people will start knocking on doors. The best advice I can give you, if you do not want somebody knocking on your door, and many people don't, we actually have a lot of concern about senior citizens these days being told not to open their doors to people knocking there. But if you don't want somebody knocking on your door, well, the best I can do is tell you to respond to the census. Even if you don't want to respond in your own home for some reason, using your own computer, go to the library. We're going to identify census hubs or places where there will be publicly available computers to be able to help people where we might, in fact, in Lower Westchester, at least when we're going to see what we can do up here, where we actually have some volunteers from high school students that are saying, how can we help? Can, can we help staff in the libraries? So we're going to kind of match those to make sure there's always going to be some technical assistance available at, the, at these census hubs. But, um, but if people are not comfortable or they don't have internet service in their homes, we're going to make sure that they, and, and Rick, we're going to need the town's help in making sure that any census hubs we identify up in Somers will be publicly you know, made available, that information. All right. Um, the last mailing, by the way, from the Census Bureau will be April 20th with it. It's an it's not too late to respond. Um, postcard. So again, just reminding people that this, it's still not too late. In fact, you'll have until the end of July to respond to the census. And at that point, the Census Bureau just has to assume that they've counted everybody that they can. They, the Census Bureau must deliver to the president on, by December 31st the official count of people living in Westchester, in, not Westchester County, in, in the United States of America. All right, this is my cause for concern number two. <laughs> In anticipation of the census every 10 years, the Census Bureau does what they call the CBAM survey, the Census Barriers, Attitudes, and Motivators survey. They sent this survey out in 2018 to 50,000 households. Only 17,500 people responded to it. The, of the people who, in the 2008, they did the same thing in anticipation of the 2010 census. 14% of the people who responded to the 2008 survey said they were not going to respond to the census. 14%. In reality, 24% of the population did not respond to the census, 10% more. In 2018, the same survey said 33% of the population who responded said they were not gonna to respond to the census. If we add 10% onto that, that's four out of every 10 people living in Westchester saying they're not gonna respond. That would be tremendously harmful to the county if our population, if we just couldn't get that many people to respond. So again, cause for concern number two. People were also asked in this survey, how familiar are you with the census? Only 79% of the people who responded said they had familiarity with the census. That's 21% of the people who said they didn't know. Now think about it. I told you I have a 19-year-old and I have 26-year-olds, my, my twin daughters. They were 16 and, and nine 10 years ago. They wouldn't have had to respond to the census, right? So, um, so there's a whole generation of young adults 
that have never had to the respond to the census, but now very well may be living in private housing, unless they're still living in your house. All right, so there's a whole group of young people that we need to tell that it's their responsibility to respond to the census. By the way, there's also 10 years worth of new Americans and new immigrants and new people that have come and visiting scientists and all sorts of people that are living in, in the United States that also have to be counted. So people were asked, if you're not going to respond to the census, why not? Apathy, concerns about data confidentiality and privacy, fear of repercussions, distrust of the government, and frankly, what's in it for me? They were asked, what would motivate you to respond? 94% of the people who responded said if, if it meant more money for hospitals and healthcare and for fire departments, that would encourage them to respond. 92% said if it meant more roads to fix, more money to fix those potholes and to repair roads and bridges, they would, they would respond. 85% <laughs> said if it meant more money for for the schools and for our children in schools, they would respond. So this tells us how we should be directing our, our advertising. We need to motivate people to respond by telling them what does their response mean. In fact, it means the distribution of $880 billion worth of funding. That goes to hospitals and fire departments and schools. So it, they, they're right that this is, this is where it goes. And roads, yes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so we have identified what we call hard to count areas in Westchester County. These are areas where it was less than the national average of the response rate. And depending upon the darkness of the color tells you how low the response rate was. Those areas that are bright red are areas that had less than a 50% response rate. Uh, in the 2010 census. Now, Somers is white. So Somers actually had a really good response rate last time around. Um, but because of the fact that you have your heritage hills, you have a lot of senior citizens that live in this town, we are in fact worried about them recognizing the fact that they have to complete the survey electronically this time. But look, Yorktown right across the border had a bright red area. So it, it doesn't, it's not, there's no socioeconomic c connection to it. There are bright red areas all over the county. So again, this is all the more reason why I'm trying to get out to as many municipalities as possible to help them understand that there are areas all over this county. More than 50% of the city of Mount Vernon, more than 50% of the village of Portchester, more than 50% of the village of Elmsford are colored in. So these are certainly areas where we are concerned about the response. Now, what can local municipalities do? One of the most important things we're encouraging municipalities to do is to work with their school districts. Think about it. How did you all learn to recycle? Your, my child came home from school one day and said, Mom, do you know how many water bottles there are in the ocean? That's how you learn to recycle, because our kids came home and guilted us into doing it. Because they, they learned in their classes about more about the environment than we ever did growing up. So what better thing than to have children come home and say, Mom, it's really important that you respond to the census. Particularly those children that are legal, those children that are citizens who may come home to parents who may not be and may, may be undocumented but for them to understand that. So we're actually encouraging the schools to adopt a census week because the, the Census Bureau has online on their, on their website curriculum for all different grade levels to incorporate lessons about the census into their math classes, into their history classes, into their English classes. So that we, we, again, all kids at all grade levels, number one, they can come home and tell mom and dad to respond, but two, remember those young adults I told you who didn't really learn about the census 10 years ago? We won't have that 10 years from now if we can start to educate our high school kids now about the importance and the role of the census 10 years from now we won't have to worry about it. So it's kind of like training those building departments to respond to the building permit survey. It's not going to help us in, with the 2020 census, but it's going to help us with the 2030 census. All right, so again, response rates are, there are concerns about response rates all over the county. So on April 1st, 2019, County Executive George Latimer did establish a Westchester County Complete Count Committee. I have to tell you, in 2010, we didn't do any of this. I, you know, we were, I, I was in the planning department, we were not out doing presentations to local municipalities. It was, we just let the Census Bureau do their thing. But when we saw the results, we saw the fact that, again, areas of Westchester were not counted correctly. 
And so because of the town of Yorktown, I got chastised for the fact that I put senior citizens first. I'm going to tell, talk about them first. Uh, I put them last, by the way, on my list. I'll talk about them first. So the subcommittees, of the Westchester Complete Count Committee established five subcommittees because we identified that there are five real distinct areas that we need to focus our attention on. So the first, seniors and persons with disabilities. Seniors are used to getting a form in the mail. I mean, this is my sixth census already. So imagine, you know, some of the seniors who are probably 20 years or 30 years older than me who are expecting to get a form. They're, they're, again, they're not going to. We have to help them understand that. We're going to um, get, be expecting to get out to every single senior center and nutrition program in February and March to be able to educate seniors, not just about the fact that there's an electronic form and an electronic response this time around, but in the event that they want somebody to come to their door, what to expect, the fact that they should ask for an ID, the fact that they should not be asked for a bank account number or for credit card information or for social security uh, information. So there's a lot of educating that we need to do to our older population who, again, get, they, they get, there are so many scams out there that um, affect our seniors. We really want them to be careful, but we want them to respond to the census. Um, persons with disabilities, again, another population that their ability potentially to get to a, a computer and to be able to respond <laughs> online. I've already met with a visiting nurses association and with a long-term caregiver group so that, you know, again, we can start getting into how better to get it to some of these populations than through their home health aides. So to the extent that we can uh, incentivize and encourage and educate the home health aides, um, all the better likely or likelihood that it will get a good response from those groups. So youth and education, I already talked about hoping to encourage our schools to, do, to adopt a census week. Um, I don't know if the municipality of Somers has uh, any kind of annual conversation or monthly conversation with your school board, but if that's something that, you know, that could be done, that would be really helpful. Um, but, but again, we recognize that everybody has somebody that they trust, whether it's their clergy, whether, you know, some faith-based organization, whether it's their doctor or their home health, you know, their, some, um, health organization or just a nonprofit or community based organization. We're going to be working with all sorts of these organizations to make sure we're getting the information out to people so that they know the census is coming and again how important it is. So, questions? For those, those jobs that are going to be offered online to do the census. When those census people come into a municipality, will they be going into get credentialing? Because here we don't permit people to go to a Mario, would you like to answer that or do you want me to answer it? Because I already asked you this question. No worries, no worries. <laughs> so uh, individuals that will be doing canvassing operations, we do reach out to the local police departments and municipalities by way of email or letter, usually email, but sometimes that gets missed. Um, that's happened once or twice already once just when we did our address canvassing. But uh, at the end of the day, they will have a government ID or a tax card. And um, so that's the only way we, we, we open up communication and we let, we let you know people are going to be coming and conducting operations. Yeah. Okay, well, in, in our town, it would be the town clerk's office that you would contact. And we have uh, IDs or? I'm, they will have their own ID. This is oh, like we, Sniper. Like, I don't, I don't. They, they're not covered under our code. It's the campaign for the environment and those people. Mm -hmm. They just go. They but they let our, our police know that they're okay. They're here. Well, well, it answers that question. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, every it, and it's, and different municipalities will handle it in different ways. Obviously, the city of Yonkers, it's going to be but tough for them to keep own. track of how many census takers are going to be going around. Okay. So folks are going to uh, be requested to do this on, by, uh, in, by the internet. If you don't comply with that, you're going to have knocking on the doors. <laughs> do you have any visual aids what these mailings look like so it's not uh, thank you. mistaken we, for a piece we, of junk mail? We are, um, as soon as we can get something, as the Census Bureau has been great about feeding information to us. We are actually preparing, we're going to roll out really soon the County Census 2020 website. And on our website, we're putting copies of documents. So we already have the English, look, the Span the English and Spanish surveys, what they will look like. Um, so again, we know what the logo certainly looks like. So, you know, when we get a sense of uh, what the actual mailings will look like, what a code might look like, that's what will help with that. Um, because again the the ability for people to take what needs to get done and 
create scams out of it is just going to be unbelievable. We know that. Is this logo one you're going to use? Yes, that is the county's logo. Yep. <laughs> And we are organizing on December 3rd a meeting of all of the complete count committees. About 18 municipalities right now have, have created their own complete count committees where they had undercounted areas. We encourage them to create those complete count committees. You're all, you're all welcome to do one if you think you'd, it, it would be helpful here. But we'll be reaching out to you directly anyway. We have a really great relationship here anyway, so sure. we'll know how to reach you. The good news about the fact that people are responding online is we will be able to see in more real time how the response rates are going in each of the municipalities. The Census Bureau won't have to wait for all those forms to arrive and then they start keep, you know, key stroking them into the computers. They'll automatically be fed into the system at, for the residents and for the location and the census tract. So we'll be able to see the response rate in, the, in those census tracts to be able to help the Census Bureau because we can't necessarily go, we can't go door to door and start knocking and say, did you reply to the census? It has to be the official census takers that go and do that. But we might be able to say to them, listen, this census tract has a low response rate, but there's a Ukrainian building in there, there's, or there's a Haitian Creole neighborhood in there, or, or something like that. Again, Southern Westchester, we have more of these little um, ethnic areas that um, it would be helpful for them to know to send somebody in who speaks certain, uh, who speaks certain languages, to, again, to get a better response rate. Do you have an estimate of some sort of uh, how many people do not have internet access? I know many times here in town we talk about things on the internet. We always hear from some people like, well, not everybody has that, so you better have a, another way of doing it. Do you have an idea? Actually, the Census Bureau has online, because Mario walked me through it yesterday, a program. Got a big smile back yeah, because he actually took the time to take me through it. But they have a program called Rome. Um, where they actually have for each census tract, they know what percentage of the people who live in that census tract have internet access. There's all sorts of information in there about each census tract. So as they go around and they deal with, you know, the each look at each census tract, they have a sense of what the population is. So do that you know in Westchester what number you're working with there? Each each. Each census tract is going to be totally different just because of the nature of what might be there. Remember, some census tracts will have industrial but you don't have areas. A total I don't have a, I don't have an just overall wondering. sense because okay. certain areas will have better coverage than others. So, okay. So let's say we go to our nutrition center, right, mm -hmm. and our folks there talk to the individuals about this, and we find people that don't have access. Mm -hmm. What do you do? Again, the census hubs are going to be really important. The, we're working with Westchester Library sen uh, System. One of their uh, staff is actually on our complete count committee. They are looking to see if they're going to be able to offer extended library hours during the middle of March to the middle of April, so that and then be able to staff it with people who would be able to go. So if people can go to their local library and know that the public computers are available for them, and there might be somebody there to offer some technical help, making sure they get to the website correctly for them to do it. It's nine questions. It should not take long. We really should be able to get people to respond, you know, quickly and process through those the, the public computers. Okay. It will count in the official municipality. Remember the boundary districts that I Perhaps showed you? Perhaps you could just repeat the question for Sure. The um, so the, so the, the, the person is asking um, if she lives in Lincolndale, but you have, don't, you have a, a, a Mayapak mailing address. But you have a Mayapak's post office box, but you live in Somers, obviously. Um, where will she be counted? You, because again, it's the location, the code that you will get will identify where your housing unit is. It will keep you with the town of Somers. Yeah, that, that happens, oh my God, in Westchester County, the zip codes and the boundary lines and the different names. Mario, if you want to answer. I, I just to oh, why don't you come down, Mario, and join us, join us for the uh, oh, wrap up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Garcia. All right, well, while I'm at it, let me go ahead and leave my car so that way. Thank you. Sure. Link up later. Thank you. Oh. Hi, I'm Mario Garcia. I'm the partnership specialist of the Lower Hudson Valley region. Um, so to address the PO box, uh, also besides that you're going to be officially counted where your housing unit is at, so in the, in the, in the municipality it's at, uh, protocol when it comes to PO boxes, 
we, since there's no physical address at a PO box, you will most likely, almost 100%, get it hand delivered to your address. And you will probably also have the option to get interviewed or surveyed right there by the uh, census taker. Okay. We will try multiple times. We will try uh, at different times. I'm not familiar with Lincoln Dale, so yeah, Lake, Lake, I'm from Austin. Lake Lincoln Dale, even though it's in Somers, belongs to the Manhattan Post Office for basically every house. So. Just answered that. But is it, where is it physically located? In Which? Town of okay, so it would be in the town of Somers. Physically in Westchester and Somers, Manhattan Post Office is fine. Yeah, it'll it will be in Somers regardless of where the post, where the mail's delivered. Mm -hmm. But these people could go online and fill it out, couldn't they? Oh yeah. Without yeah. someone so, knocking on their door yeah. at a did you cover uh, nighttime uh, hours? Yeah. So. Uh, I'm sure she mentioned it. You're going to have online, 2020census.gov, uh, as soon as April 1st comes around, but you're going um, to be able to respond as early as March 12th. You can also respond online. We've got 59 languages that are covered, 12 languages that are supported online and on the phone. The rest of them are going to have language guides, which just recently released. Once again, if anyone's interested, 2020census.gov. We have outreach materials. We have translated materials. <coughs> everything you might need at that one centralized location. And all the questions that you asked about the percentages of the internet and all that, I could actually show all of that to you tomorrow or to your clerk, and then she can go ahead and break it down for everyone else. Mm -hmm. It's really cool information. It's, it's, it's a lot of insight. It's a lot of insight. Cool. Well, I want to thank Norma and, uh, and yourself for your presentation. Thank you. And we're going to hope uh, that our reporting is as good as it was uh, last time around. Right? <laughs> Yes, so th thank, thank you very much. Thank you for All thank right, you. have a good evening. Okay, All right. okay. Okay, our next uh, agenda item um, is a an update from the Northern Westchester Hospital. Uh, Mr. Joel Sigelman, President and CEO. Joel. And Hello he has again. some introductions to make, I'm sure. Ooh. Well, here we go. Another show. Double featured, no problem. Too advanced. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. So um, let me just start by saying thank you for the opportunity, Supervisor and Town Board. We appreciate the chance um, to give you just a quick update. There's a lot we would love to share with you if you have all night. You don't. Um, I see you have a busy agenda, so we're just going to try and hit some highlights. And uh, the main reason that I thought it would be appropriate to come give you an update is that um, I, we are in the middle of a transition, a leadership transition, and I wanted to take this opportunity to introduce Derek Anderson to the town of Somers and to the board. Um, I've been, I will have been serving in this role for 19 years at the end of December, and at that point, Derek will be taking over. We are now overlapping, which is a wonderful luxury to have, a chance to transition together for a couple of months. Uh, but I want to give him a chance to get to know you, and so uh, I'm going to. I have a few things I want to say, tell you about, and then he has a few things he wants to tell you about. So thanks again for the opportunity. Um, so there's there's a lot happening at North Westchester Hospital, and we think you should just be up to date on this. I checked, and the last time I was here was five years ago, and we were just making a decision at that point to join uh, one of the big health systems. And the decision that we made at the time was to join the Northwell system. At the t it didn't even have that name yet. Um, Northwell is now the largest system in New York State, uh, 23 hospitals, uh, an amazing medical school, an amazing research institute. So we made a really good decision. This has gone very well for us. And you'll see uh, some evidence of that as we go through this. So um, welcome, Derek. Uh, and we're just going to run through a couple of program highlights because there's a lot going on. I just wanted to start with oncology. You, some of this you'll know, some of it you won't. Uh, we've been a comprehensive community cancer center for over 15 years now with all the certifications. It's a full service cancer center with, with um, many different surgical specialties. 
uh, all of the medical and hematology specialties on site, radiation oncology, we have a gamma knife, we, have a, uh, we do stereotactic radiosurgery. We do a lot of the things that you hear advertised by other medical centers. We just don't choose to spend as much money on advertising. We'd rather spend it on healthcare and come tell you about it, which uh, costs less. Thank you. So um, it's, a, it's a full service cancer center. What, these are the core services of a cancer center. What I wanted to just point out is the stuff that makes it a wonderful cancer center and so well regarded by our patients are all the supportive services around it. The clinical trials program, our genetic counseling program, uh, there's a special program just dedicated to helping families deal with these kinds of uh, caregiver needs. Uh, our caregiver center, I'll just mention, uh, is a model nationally. It's now been replicated by 23 other hospitals across the country, um, including the University of Pennsylvania uh, and so forth. So it's a really a wonderful model program. There's a health and wellness program that's free of charge to all of our cancer treatment patients to uh, deal with all the psychosocial and other support needs of these patients. So it's a very full service program, has been for years. I want to tell you about leadership in robotics. So we were one of the first hospitals in this region to start a surgical robotics program. Uh, our team has now done uh, about 6,000 robotic cases. We have three da Vinci robots working pretty hard every day in the OR. They are not working alone, they're working with the guidance of surgeons, obviously. Uh, we, have a, um, we have four surgeons who have achieved Master of Excellence, um, Surgeons of Excellence recognition, and one master surgeon who was one of the first 10 accredited in the world as a master robotic surgeon. That's Terry Wishner. So it's an advanced robotic surgery center. Uh, it is a full, with the exception of heart surgery, anything that is done robotically in an operating room anywhere is being done robotically in our hospital when appropriate. Doesn't mean every case is appropriate. Uh, let me, we can't do video, so we're gonna skip that. Uh, I wanted to tell you a little bit about where we are with mother baby, because we have uh, a remarkable program. We do 1,700 deliveries a year. We are the highest level neonatology program that a community hospital can be in New York State. Uh, we have on site, women, women, re women relate to what I'm about to say, on site, 24 hours, seven days a week, we have in the building a obstetrician, an anesthesiologist, and a neonatologist. There, there's never a moment where those three experts are not standing by on our labor floor for whatever needs might arise. So it's a very safe, high level, high quality program. Patient experience in our mother baby unit is probably one of the top in New York State. So we have, we're at the 92nd percentile national ranking in, in how patients rank their experience in our OB4. So very safe, great patient experience. The experience starts when we learn of your pregnancy. We have a, what's called a, a, a mother baby navigator and she helps women uh, plan their birth, plan the prenatal care, plan the postnatal care, so that when a woman arrives in labor, we're expecting her, we know what she's interested in, we have it all arranged in advance. Uh, it's a whole different experience than, than the fire drill that happens in the, in the old days when uh, a woman would arrive in the ER. So we're very proud of that program. Uh, and at this point, I think I will hand things over to Derek Anderson, I'll let you take it from here. Uh, the best part of this to us would be if you have questions and comments. So we're trying to get through the presentation quickly. We'd love to hear from you about what's good and where we should go in the future. So, Derek. Thank you, Joel. Um, so thank you to the supervisor and the board for allowing us to come here tonight. Um, it's exciting to be with you. I recently relocated to the area, so I live approximately eight minutes in that direction. Um, it was very dark getting here, so I couldn't tell you how I'm getting home. Um, so thank you to GPS. A Couple of quick things um, just to continue this. Northern Westchester Hospital is, is known as a plain tree designated hospital. This is an international designation for how every step of our process includes patients helping us design everything we do. That is everything from hiring of staff to our committees, our improvement groups, everything has our patients from your community, from our community engaged with us to help us solve problems, look at things differently, and frankly, keep us accountable. Um, so that's an incredible thing to have in our backyard. Um, this joins the ranks of just recently Johns Hopkins Medical Center in Baltimore, 
also is plane tree designated. So this is among kind of the elite um, and for a local community hospital in our backyard, really something quite incredible. Let's go the opposite way. We're gonna skip over this. A program that we really wanted to make you aware of that is coming soon to a town of Somers near you is, and we are introducing a cardiac cath lab to Northern Westchester Hospital. And so what does that mean? Today, if you were having an active heart attack um, and you call your local 911 or your lo local EMS provider, they will take you to the closest heart center. That is a place where they can um, treat you for a heart attack and do an intervention if necessary. Right now, Northern Westchester Hospital and many of our hospitals in this immediate area do not offer this service. Um, we're going in front of the state health department in about two weeks and we're expecting approval on this program. And so come summertime, what this means is, and we have a photo on the next slide, this is a full service comprehensive cardiac catheterization lab, um, which means um, we are working with the gentleman in the photo on the left is Dr. Carl Reimers. Dr. Reimers is the head of the cath lab at Lenox Hill Hospital, which is a part of the Northwell Health family. Dr. Reimers and Lenox has a long history, first in the country to do angioplasty, first in the country to do drug eluding stents that are placed in hearts. So we're bringing the expertise of our Northwell family to Northern Westchester. So for us, this is really quite exciting. So more to follow on that. On, on this particular topic, on the, so the hospital engages in a lot of community health-based programs. Joel and I were just at a local school encouraging young people around running club. This was in North Salem. But a topic that we feel, really feel the urgency to talk to you about tonight is the topic of vaping. These are e-cigarettes. And if you've read the news recently or seen media reports, this is um, luckily becoming very controversial for very good reason, very good health reasons. So many of you recognize the brand Juul, J-U-U-L, right? These are um, e-cigarettes, they call them pods, one pod of Juul, and keep in mind um, that this is a little bit worse than even tobacco. Um, one pod of Juul contains more nicotine than an entire pack of cigarettes. So when we see some of our young folks um, and some of our more mature adults smoking e-cigarettes, um, please keep in mind this is a pretty serious situation. And what's happening now is a lot of these um, e-cigarettes are becoming tainted um, through sources that are not pure. And at Northern Westchester Hospital, we've seen just in the last month or so six vaping-related illnesses that have become pretty serious, one of whom ended up in our ICU and hospitals in the region, including 18 and 19 year olds, ending up on heart-lung machines because of directly related to vaping. And so um, what we were gonna show you tonight, and we apologize, we don't have the audio for you. Um, we have created an ad campaign that it's really a public health campaign around e-cigarettes and vaping. And this was developed by a group of high school students, frankly, it's called our President's Junior Leadership Council. This is a group of high school age students who put together what is an incredibly impactful one minute video talking about the effects of vaping. And so please, we urge you, um, and then I'll move on, I promise. We urge you, if you know anyone or you have anyone in your immediate friends or family who are engaged with e-cigarettes, please just read up on it. Um, this is becoming a public health crisis as we see it. Okay, also coming January, we are making an investment really in this community. We, are, we have hired a physician, a nurse practitioner, and a case manager who is a nurse trained in insurance and how to navigate healthcare. That trio, that physician, a nurse practitioner, and a case manager, we are sending them out, them out into homes. So we are working with um, our local health agencies to identify patients who most need coordination of healthcare <coughs> to avoid unnecessary admission to the hospital. And so this is what we're calling our house calls program. Coming in January, we're hoping this goes well. We're excited to see it launch and to expand it. And so please, 
um, be on the lookout for this because this is us taking what is really great healthcare at Northern Westchester into homes where healthcare really should be delivered. Okay, a lot of upgrades happening at Northern Westchester. Um, we kind of won't go through all of these, but one of which you can see on the right is this cardiac catheterization lab. So um, one of the nicest laboratories, and I've been to the Cleveland Clinic um, Hopkins just in the last year um, through just my immediate work and circles, and this is by far one of the nicest labs I've seen in the last five years. So, and it's incredible that it's about 15 minutes down the road. So we're very excited about this. I'm gonna end with this. Um, this map, and it's incredibly busy, I suppose, on purpose. Um, Northern Westchester is a part of Northwell Health, as Joel mentioned. Every dot that you see, you have the H boxes. So Northwell Health comprises 23 hospitals in the New York metro immediate area, um, all the way out to eastern Long Island at Peconic Bay, which is in Riverhead. And then every circle you see is in some fashion an ambulatory location. It's a physician's office, uh, an imaging center, and we have almost 900 of these centers. So Northwell, and we're just, I'll end with this, um, we are looking to cover every aspect of healthcare, not just when you're in the hospital and you need us the most, um, but how are we connecting with our communities well before to keep them healthy, looking at population health, um, so that, frankly, we keep you away from the hospital. Um, but we're here, obviously, if it's needed as kind of a basic public health infrastructure. So I think that's it. We're going to pause here. Uh, we thank you for letting us come, and we're happy to take any questions or concerns. <laughs> Well, I want to thank you, gentlemen, um, for bringing up the, the vaping situation. Um, this town, as well as many, many others throughout the, the county, uh, have that same problem in our schools. So our schools have a very active uh, program. Mm -hmm. um, we, we as a town have what's called a Partners in Prevention group that uh, Councilman Sirico um, is our the liaison to and uh, you know what we hear you know about the product about the misuse of it is even is even more scary it's scary yeah so um, yes yeah. just a comment on that um, sure. supervisor Rob so one of our uh, management team Kiva young right is a, is a member of the Somers partners and prevention uh, effort and um, it, that the, the work that Derek referred to from the President's Junior Leadership Council came from the work of our Adult President's Council, and I want to thank you for serving on that, uh, Supervisor, because it's bringing together these towns that, that makes us so um, well informed and effective. Uh, mm -hmm. So thank you for that. Are there are uh, questions. Well, I think we're uh, very fortunate to have about your facility uh, so close in proximity to our town. Um, and uh, I wanted to thank you. Welcome, Derek. Joel, thank you for your service over the last 19 years. Um, you'll be missed. And uh, Derek, looking forward to working with you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good evening. All right, great. Thank you, guys. OK, moving on to the agenda, um, public comment. Um, we're going to open public comment. Um, Are we taking the school? Excuse me? Taking the new school? Taking what out? The new school? The new school. Oh, no, no, you're right. I have to move that. Okay, I'm sorry. The, the next item on our agenda is uh, the new private school in Somers. Um, really, the discussion here is uh, we want to acknowledge receipt of the revised submission of materials. Um, it was submitted. September 30th, our town engineering um, firm and planner and our engineering department have already responded in kind with comments um, that they're revising. But And we had a meeting um, with some of the principals from the new school. Uh, the name um, that, that the school is going to be named is Bluestone Peak Academy. 
Uh, and as previously presented here, it's, it will be a um, first class academy known as a STEAM school. That's science, uh, technology, <coughs> engineering, arts, and math. Most people have heard of STEM schools, but they're adding this arts component to it. So um, they are working through the, the process. Um, I just want to officially recognize that we do have their, their submission. And um, it's, it's a, in draft form. And um, we're looking forward. They're currently in the seeker process as well, State Environmental Review Act. Um, and we look forward to um, their final submission. Okay, I'd like to make a motion to uh, acknowledge our receipt of the report. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Thank you, Patty. <clears throat> okay, oh, now we're on public comment. Um, so we're going to open public comment as we normally do. Um, <coughs> and I ask that um, public comment is for anyone that really wants to speak about anything or bring to the town board's attention, <coughs> but not to take the time of public comment up for an agenda item. So um, our Somers uh, Sewer District number two, we're going to have the number four on the agenda. We'll be doing that right after public comment. So you know, again, um, I. We're going to be discussing it. Um, I, I can't prohibit you from speaking in public comment about it, um, but I would say that uh, that you would be courteous enough to keep your comments down to three minutes so that in public comment that everybody can get an opportunity to speak. Um, I want to make uh, clear before we begin that there has been some opposition uh, to this town establishing a sewer uh, district and putting out false information. So I want to be clear about a few things, even before we start public comment. There will be no zoning changes because we're putting in the sewers. It does not pertain to a zoning change. Uh, anyone who is saying that has it incorrect. Some has falsely claimed that the sewer district is just a ploy to grab more tax money for the town. That couldn't be further from the truth. It's completely false. Any fees collected from um, the sewer district will go directly to paying sewer district, and that's it. Uh, the fees will never fill the town's coffers. Some are spreading rumors that the engineer's new plan is out. That's incorrect. Our engineers are still working on revised formulas to determine the cost of the system, and we will be hearing uh, from them uh, when we get to item four. We were serious when we said we wanted your feedback. You suggested we speak with the controller's office about cost formula, which we did. The engineers are now recalculating. We'll present, um, present the final map plan and report this month. Um, we'll issue a fact sheet uh, and facts as soon as it's completed. So I'm going to make a motion at this point to open public comment. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Is there anyone here for public comment? For anything that is not an agenda item. Yes, sir. Can we speak on the, so the sewer, then you debate the sewer, or do we have to do it now? No, what I'm saying is when we come to the next item, sewer. yeah, we're going to have a presentation by the engineers yeah. that if you have a comment. I have a lot of comments. Yes. <laughs> okay, well, we're going to ask you to limit them, but let us um, then uh, have the engineers after they. It's on the agenda for the town board to get an update from our engineers. You as the public will have an opportunity to answer, ask them questions. Yeah. So anything that's not uh, for agenda item four that you want to speak about, to about roads, whatever. Yeah, that's probably you. most people there. <laughs> that, the woman okay, there. is anybody here for public comment? This is public comment. Yes, ma'am. Oh, I, I have a hard time getting up, so. Um, Yes. Just, um, I noticed driving over here, yeah. it's really hard to see when it's dark out and with it raining. So I'm just I'm kind of wondering if there's that something that could be done with at least like the lines in the road to 
to paint them, maybe some kind of fluorescent, mm -hmm. something to make them stand out more for the safety of the drivers, maybe reflectors on where there are guardrails. No, that's that's that, that's a good suggestion. Um, yeah. Personally, I would like that white line on the right-hand side of the road to be uh, yes. very bright. Um, I can refer that good idea. to our highway department yeah. and to the the DOT. That's thank you for the comment. Thanks. Can we have your name? Ellen Griffin. Thank you, Ellen. Okay, anyone else for public comment? Yes, Tom, come on. Hi, my name's Tom Smith, 15 Carpenter Place. Since you guys are so worried about Link, since you guys are so worried about Link Shedlock, when we got the commercial strip there, which they state is only one, um, what time are they allowed to get deliveries in the morning? I'm not understanding. Well, you got Rocky's Deli over there. Oh, okay. What time is he allowed to have trucks come over there, make deliveries? Well, according to the zoning, it's uh, 7 a.m. Businesses can start. 7 a.m.? 7 a.m. And how long are they allowed to idle the trucks? Well, there's a Westchester County law, no more than 15 minutes. Not three minutes? I don't believe so. Okay, how can we um, stop the trucks from coming before 7 o'clock? Possibly we don't have a complaint on it. You got a complaint now? Thank you. Okay. Is that it? You'll look into it? I'll refer it. Thank you. <laughs> Anyone else for public comment? Yes. <laughs> Linda Luciano, 10 Walker Drive. I'd like to start off by addressing your article in the paper from October 24th, where you stated to those who oppose the sewers, not all of us oppose the sewers, it was the errors in the plan and the outrageous costs that we opposed. You stated that you want to work closely with us, but not once have you reached out to us. We asked to see the PR firm's FAQ sheet, and you sent it to us on Friday with only 15 questions on it, when it should have had about 50. And on Monday morning, we sent you pages of questions as well as pointing out how their answers were based on assumptions and there was not a single question on co cost included and two questions were asked twice. Why is it that we have to continue to point out errors in everything that is done? You don't need a PR firm, you need us. Ironically, in your article, you say it's not about hiring taxes, but that is the first thing you will be doing if this sewer district is formed. That's incorrect. So it's not going to be on my tax bill? If you're in the sewer district. Thank you. The county executive's office said it the best. Your town board should be answering to you, the people who put them in office. The board members are elected officials who are supposed to be neutral on town issues. And your article from 1024 was most certainly not. In your article, you stated that we had some validity, but chose not to mention them at all. You spoke about how great sewers are and tried to scare people with use it or lose it. This 10 million has been available for us for 21 years and has not been used and this money does not expire like we have heard people say. It only gets depleted when towns use it. I spoke to the Westchester County Planning Department on October 30th and I was told that there is plenty of money still in that fund. So the urgency that people are placing on it is not a factor at all. The 38 million that was given to Westchester towns to improve water quality, some have chosen to use that money for septic maintenance and repairs, which is a lot cheaper than your option to put sewers in. So stop saying it's only for sewers when it's not. That no one said it was only for sewers. Yes, actually we, we have it on tape. We have it on tape. All right, this, <laughs> well, just, right, I should let you speak. Well, this is what happens, go ahead. Okay. Bedford took 750000 out of their $10 million grant to use towards their septic system repair program, and the rest went towards their sewer project of $22 million, not a $63 million project. Not to mention that the average salary in Bedford is 175 versus Shenrock or Lakendale at an average of 100. 
We've been told that there is minor septic pollution, less than 1% as stated by our engineer going into the lakes. Why not enforce the cleaning of septics? You get the list from the county. Use the $10 million for a septic system repair program like other towns have done. Educate the public. Tell people to pick up their dog poop. Do something about the rock salt in the winter because that is a huge pollutant to our lakes, even more than the septics. Somers stopped using sand and salt about 15 years ago during the winters. The higher concentration of salt is killing the lakes because of the chloride in it. It takes only one teaspoon of road salt to permanently pollute five gallons of water. Once in the water, there is no way to remove the chloride, and at high concentration, chloride can harm fish and plant life. In your article, you spoke about the $1,200 average yearly cost to residents, which is not the correct average by any means, and breaking the cost down by month, by week, and by day on purpose makes it look like it's not expensive. It's used all the time to hide the high cost of something. Your average estimated cost of 1200 is based on an assumption that you will get $37.5 million in funding. You cannot assume anything, and according to the Comptroller's Office, you should not be basing possible funding in, your co in our costs. You laid out our cost table like that to hide the real costs. If you didn't do your table that way, the true average cost would have blown people's minds. Shenorock's estimated yearly average is 2600 Let's have order, please. Shenorock's estimated yearly average is 2600 and Lake Lincolndale is 3800 You strategically put that $37.5 in so that the average cost was more appealing and you did it in a way that our average would be the same. So let's do the correct cost example for Lincolndale. That is approximately 316 a month, a little over Mr. 73 Luciano, a week. I ask for some courtesy. Or roughly $10 a day. Some comments, so you're over three minutes. Yes. But if you could leave your comments with the clerk. We'll have that. Other peop there's people here that are not going to speak that have deferred their three minutes to me. You want to speak to them? No. Okay. That, that's what I'm. Can I just thank finish you. this? That's, that's what I'm. Can I, I just to finish to my paragraph so then I'm not like cut off? Sure. Thank you. I'm speaking right now. That is 114,000 over 30 years. And again, that is just the average cost. So somebody who is paying 5,000 a year is paying 150,000. People would rather put that money into their health bills to upkeep their home or pay for a child's tuition. Everybody knows that projects do not come out on budget, so nobody can predict what our costs will end up being. You don't have the funding in place, and yes, it might be possible to get more funding down the line, but even if you only get half of that 37 and a half, our costs will still be higher than you have been advertising for the last few months. Thank Everything you. is thank, based thank on you. assumptions. You didn't mention that in your article. Thank you. Are, is there anyone else, excuse me, ma'am, is there anyone else here for public comment? Well, my question All right, ma'am, if... Yes. Yes, I did. And I also asked for courtesy with time. All right. Is there anyone else here for public comment? Okay. Hearing none, I'll make a motion uh, <coughs> to close public comment. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Okay. Which brings us to number four, um, Somers Sewer District Number Two Formation. Um, I would like to uh, say on, on behalf of the board that uh, we welcome open dialogue about installing sewer systems in Lincolndale and Shenorock communities to address the water quality issues there. Um, this has been clearly demonstrated by our public hearings, our, um, our willingness to hear you and then go back and negotiate um, and get input from the controller's office. But we're alarmed about the false information and misleading facts that some are putting on websites, flyers, and letters to the editor. I want to make four things perfectly clear. There will be no zoning changes in the lake communities if sewers are installed. Any fees the, towns collect, the town collects for the projects will not go into its coffers. They pay for construction and upkeep of the new system. If Costs are being uh, recalculated based on New York State Controller's Office input. The new costs have not been issued as of yet. 
If the sewer vote fails, Lake Lincolndale and Lake Shanarock will lose a $10 million allocations for sewers, which, which will serve their community for, for the future. Clean water monies originally allocated for Somers will be reallocated um, either elsewhere in Somers for other areas that may need sewers or this pot of money that's at the county, the county and our commissioner of planning was here tonight, I had a conversation with her and she said that um, we want this money to be drawn down so that we can go back to New York City and get additional funding to improve the water quality issues up, up in the northern Westchester. Um, so we welcome members of the public who wish to speak to address uh, the board after our, our presentation and update from our town engineers. Thank you. Good evening. Thank you, Supervisor. Uh, my name is Steve Robbins. I'm with Woodard and Current Engineering. Um, since our last meeting on the proposed Somer Sewer District Number Two, uh, we have uh, continued to work with the town, uh, with Town Council, uh, and uh, we have received uh, additional input on the project mm -hmm. uh, from the Westchester County Planning Department and the State Comptroller. Uh, the Westchester County Planning Department. Uh, provided input on the report that uh, they felt that the equalization rate and the assessed value discussion should be, could be clarified uh, to improve the public's understanding of, uh, of what the assessment is and what the market value is, what the equalization rate is, uh, to make that clear uh, for the public. The state comptroller uh, reviewed the report, provided input, uh, including that they would uh, prefer that if the market rate is used, uh, for um, how capital costs are allocated to the parcels, that there be at least one other factor used uh, in that discussion as well. So previously that was used uh, fully. Uh, it was an ad valorem basis, 100%. That is consistent with the way the county sewer district assesses their um, O&M costs and their uh, buy-in fee. Mm -hmm. uh, so we followed that uh, in this, and the comptroller said that they would prefer uh, if ad valorem is used, that it not be used exclusively. Okay. And what other factors did they suggest be used in addition to that? They left that very open. Um, there's what a number. They, what could they be then? Just so I it could be it could be square footage of a house. It could be road frontage. It could be water usage. It could be number of bedrooms. It could be something other than okay. a straight market value use. Okay. Thank um, you. Market value could be included, including as a significant factor, but not 100 percent. Right. That was their advice. Uh, based on uh, case law that we discussed with town council uh, and the comptroller as well. Um, so with, with that additional input uh, and the significant public comment uh, that has been provided to date, uh, the town board has asked uh, Woodard and Kern to modify the map plan and report uh, based on that input um, and clarify uh, those factors uh, and others uh, based on public input. Um, in doing so, as uh, supervisor, as, as one of your letters stated, uh, that will start a new public process. Um, Word and Kern has proceeded to make updates to the map plan and report. Uh, they are still in process. Uh, we do want to make the town's proposal as clear as possible to the residents uh, so they can be as, as well informed as possible. Uh, that uh, will include uh, clarification on how the capital financing costs are handled between phase one and phase two. That's been a topic of, of concern and confusion. And we think we can make that clearer in the report. Uh, and namely, the outcome of that is that all parcels, regardless of phase, uh, will incur costs associated with financing as that is taken on in the district. Uh, we'll have added additional discussion on property assessments and the county equalization rate. Uh, we'll have updated asset, uh, ass excuse me, assessment information uh, we've received a new uh, download of data from the assessor, uh, which includes any changes to market value since the original date of publication of the map plan and report, uh, and also cleans up uh, some of the changes uh, and omissions that were in the original report so that that is a full and complete set of data for all of the residents in the proposed district. Um, there is updated information on the financing plan, uh, including potential sources of information, uh, funding, for the project. 
One of the challenges that's obviously faced here is that uh, it is very difficult to apply for grants when there is no district for those grants to be used in. Um, based on the input received, uh, including the significant input from the community, uh, one key aspect uh, that we'd like to get input from the town board uh, for discussion tonight is how that capital uh, financing should be applied to the parcels. Uh, we would propose looking at two methods for doing so. Uh, one is the simplest, which is a flat fee. Do we take, uh, does each parcel pay an equal amount of the capital financing charge? That's how the O&M uh, costs are proposed to be allocated. Um, the, uh, that is obviously the simplest to explain, it's the simplest to implement, uh, and each parcel pays an equal amount. Uh, if we were to do that, um, each parcel would pay the same fee, whether that is a 400 square foot dwelling unit or a 4,600 square foot dwelling unit, they would pay the same flat fee. Uh, that would result in a, uh, an overall cost range. I mean, we, were, we were talking about ranges and, and averages, mm -hmm. um, as were stated before. That range would tighten from uh, what was previously approximately $450 to $2,200. Uh, to a tighter range of $900 to $1,600, plus or minus. So that tightens up the range. The average stays the same, uh, but it tightens up the range. The, those lowest valued homes would pay more. The highest valued homes would pay less because everyone pays a flat fee for that financing. The other option we propose for discussion um, is on the more complicated side, and it is based on those conversations with the comptroller. Previously, the Allocation of capital was based on a 100% ad valorem basis. Uh, to maintain that same broad uh, range of costs um, between the lowest value homes and the highest valued homes, um, we would propose 90% uh, ad valorem and 10% based on the living area square footage of the home from the assessor's records. That results in a cost range uh, very similar to the originally proposed cost range. Uh, of $460 to about $2,250. Uh, all of those numbers are um, rounded and subject to uh, review and finalization in the MAP plan and report. Uh, so I present them as uh, for, for discussion, but not as absolutes. Mm -hmm. um, so based on, on that uh, input, um, the map plan and report would be revised based on the discussion and the direction <coughs> that we get from the town and how to apply those capital financing fees. Um, as you have stated in your communications to the town, uh, the vote scheduled for December 11th has been postponed uh, and a new public process uh, will be initiated to gather input from uh, the community, including on the revisions to the map plan and report. Uh, there were two, two FAQs that are being planned. Uh, the FAQ on environmental concerns, which were from uh, community input that we received here in public forum, as well as qu other questions and input received uh, outside of public meetings. I know you've received letters and, and emails mm -hmm. from, from other constituents, um, has been posted. Uh, the FAQ that deals with costs has obviously not been posted pending uh, this discussion, uh, as that is in flux and will change. And there will certainly be opportunity for public comment on that but obviously it can't be finalized without this additional input and direction from the board. Right. Steve, could you um, just review the, the flat fee approach, what, what the, the span is? The overall span for the project, which would include uh, the county buy-in fee, the county O&M, both of those are assessed on an ad valorem basis per the county sewer district rules. Um, the capital cost uh, within the district on a flat basis, so all parcels pay the same, and the O&M for the town to run the district, uh, which again is also on a flat fee, all parcels pay the same, uh, is 900 to $1,600 plus or minus uh, as, a, as a range. And that second, and the second part, could you go over that again? Yep, 90%. so if, if the capital cost, again, uh, that portion of it were assessed on a 90% ad valorem basis, 10% building area square footage, uh, that cost range would be very similar to the prior proposal, uh, and that cost range is approximately $460 to $2,250. And that money is used? Well, that money is used, so the district, um, 
in order to, to construct this public works improvement, uh, the district is proposed to use a combination of uh, grants, of allocations, uh, and we'll have to incur some debt. So those are the capital costs. That is, that is, this discussion is about that slice of the funding, which is the capital cost. Right. That's um, the update that, that I have for you at this time. Okay. And when will all this be settled out, final and new plan? Or so we, we would certainly welcome the input uh, from the town board <laughs> as to which of those cost approaches um, you prefer. Uh, we would then revise the map plan report to be posted uh, this month uh, and, and start the public process uh, of reviewing, providing input, uh, and I assume a, a, a referendum vote on that as well. Mm -hmm. So, Ron, maybe I, I call upon you to, to walk us through what our procedures are going to be once we have that final report. So we're really... well. Opening public hearings and, and going yeah, to the when press. You, when you get the final report and it's presented by the engineers, then you would be in a position to consider uh, an order calling for a new public hearing. Mm -hmm. uh, if, for example, that was all done next week, then you could ha open the public hearing either on December 5th or December 12th. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming you would keep it open uh, th through the holidays and into the new year because once you close it then you've triggered the timing for the election right and I I, I'm, I think we discussed <clears throat> rather than having a permissive referendum where the public has to go out and petition again for a vote there is a mechanism where the town board can just uh, approve a district subject to a mandatory referendum so the public would not have to petition. Well, that makes sense. We've already seen it. You've already seen it, so, so it makes a lot of sense. Uh, so that would be the timing. You just would have to you kind of back into it, decide what the best time is to have the, the vote, and then back up I the see. dates. Because, again, when you close the public right. hearing, the vote has to occur uh, within that 60 to 75-day window. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, there's some dates we need to stay away from. Oh, yeah. Because it is, I mean, there's April's presidential primaries and all that good times. Yep. Yeah, well, we yeah. Got <laughs> February is uh, <laughs> as a slew of vacation Yeah, you got President's Week. So uh, winter break. Possibly uh, March. Yeah, that's my preference, as you know. Yeah. March. Well, that's what I would think. Yeah, you have people who uh, may be going south. Mm -hmm. You have all those vacations. I would think January, February, there's a chance of bad weather at any day, which certainly would halt, throw the whole thing up, and unless we go around with the highway department and pick everybody up. Uh, so it would seem to me that you want to avoid yep. April. So I don't know. That, that's the way it appears to me, at least. Maybe there's another. Uh, so there may be no hurry to sense. get into the public hearing phase before the holidays. You could, you could wait and open the public hearing in January if you chose to. I mean, you, you've got a lot of alternatives. Yeah, right. There's no, there's no trigger to opening the public hearing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That you just have to plug in the right date when you adopt the order, and you have to choose the place to have where you think a room would be large enough. Right. Well, I mean, speaking as one, um, we're now hearing about flat fee versus the uh, ninety percent ad valorem and ten percent. Um, Based on now, what would the ten percent be based on, Steve? The uh, living area of the house, square house footage. Of square footage. The uh, the houses in the proposed district uh, do range from four hundred and eight feet to four thousand six hundred and forty eight feet, based on the assessor's records. Okay. So can, can okay. We, no, we we'll clarify this, and though it's sort of an outside question. Well, if there's a flat fee, why is there a range to it? There are still two components that are assessed on an ad valorem basis, and those are fees imposed by the county for oh, okay. the uh, buy-in and for uh, their O&M so cost, because they ultimately have to treat the wastewater that so leaves the community. So there's a flat fee, for part, and then the other is what the county requires. Correct. And those are put together. Okay, there are, there are four, four components to the cost. Yeah. Two are the town, and two are the county. Got it. 
And the county is ad valorem. The county is ad valorem per their sewer district rules, um, and the well, town. And that's that's why we basically took that first approach. It was following yeah. that that pattern. Yes. So that's a that's the simplest approach. When you go to step two, you're sort of mixing methods, right? Yeah. the I, The idea there is um, those smallest parcels, those with the smallest uh, assessed value, smallest homes are uh, likely. Uh, least able to pay. That's obviously, uh, there's a range of, of incomes and, and capacity in the community at, at all size ranges. Uh, but the idea there was to try to find um, a mechanism that, that best mirrored that assessed value rather than uh, assessing it all at the same way across the district. Can you, this came up in some of the other meetings. I mean, could you explain why you might have discounted uh, metering? Sure. So uh, the challenge with metering is essentially you need to ensure you have enough revenue to pay for the capital costs that you have incurred. Uh, the way that was handled in, in Peach Lake, for example, uh, where they do have meters, it was primarily to address uh, some commercial properties. Uh, there was more of a blend between commercial and residential uses in that area. Uh, so there, is a, there, is, there are meters, there is a rate structure, uh, but the minimum block in that rate structure is higher, quite a bit higher than the average water usage is, uh, for example, in the Shenorock community, in the Amwalk Shenorock Water District. So it's, it essentially ends up being a default flat rate uh, for the residential properties and the commercial properties pay more. So that's a, a very different usage profile within the district uh, than there is in these two communities, which I think have all but one or two uh, parcels being residential. And then there would be additional costs for the meters. There certainly would be cost to install the meters. It's more intrusive. You're getting into someone's home. You're dealing with plumbing issues. Uh, there are additional O&M requirements <coughs> associated with maintaining those meters, uh, reading those meters um, that the district would also incur. So if, if at the end of the day, uh, meters end up uh, resulting in a very narrow distribution of costs by virtue of a block rate structure, you might as well avoid the capital costs and the uh, frustration and the inconvenience <coughs> to the homeowners of having to install those meters uh, and the additional ongoing o and cost of maintaining and reading those meters by going with a, a flat rate. Okay. Well, we have uh, a lot to think about. Um, you know, and I, I, don't, I would want to do a little more uh, research on, you know, flat oh, yeah. fee versus, yeah. you know, the uh, 90-10. Sure. Right. Um, and I know that pushes off the final map plan and report. We're on the town schedule. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Um, any, yes, sir. Yeah. All right. Do you done. have any questions for our engineer? Oh, for all of you. Presentation is done. And well done. <laughs> so once again, I would just ask everyone limit their comments. Yeah, yeah. So we're, yeah, sir. You know, I'm trying to. Supervisor Morrissey. Uh, I'm trying to be fair to everybody. Me too. Me too. Council members, good evening. I'm and you are, sir. I'm John Morton, 16th floor with Ralph. Okay. Uh, throughout the public speaking opportunities, you have been very generous with the time allotted to speakers. <coughs> I hope you will continue that generosity. Uh, your, your effort to enhance the infrastructure of SOMAS and bring SOMAS into the 21st century is very much appreciated. Sewer, lake for, uh, sewer for Lake uh, Lincoln and Shannon is a great start, but don't stop there. Uh, drinking water in the areas is a major problem. Many residents are forced to buy drinking water because their well water is not consumable. Um, we also view innovation with potential opportunities to promote inclusion and reducing friction. Anybody can criticize, but creating something of value is significantly more difficult, and that's what you're doing. Uh, when I read the SOMAS record dated October 17th, it was mentioned that supporters of the SEWER project are not a uh, no-show. Uh, to apply to that comment, supporters don't have to show up because they support and want the SEWER. Uh, I'm one of them. I'm a supporter of SEWER and water, but it has to be done in a proper form and format. The way this sewer project is prepared to present to us by Woodward and Curran is unprofessional, incomplete, and therefore unacceptable. During this hearing, residents express their thoughts and feelings and the hope their voices are heard. It's clear several residents are very unhappy. Some have spent a lot of money on new septic system, 
and are against the sewer project and they fight for what they believe in. It appears there's a lot of misunderstanding, uh, miscommunication resulting in distrust. There's a tremendous lack of knowledge about the sewer project. Your marketing or PR efforts um, for the sewer project are, let's call it, inadequate and not up to par, and that's very nicely. Uh, now you have hired a PR company to hopefully resolve that. A nice gesture, but as I say, a little too late. Residents want to hear from you. Not your consulting firm, not your PR company. Compare it to an election. If you don't run unopposed, you go into the field. You meet the residents to make your case, and that's what the residents expect and demand from you at this moment. Uh, because I was not able to attend the last town board meeting, I watched it on video, but I saw as politics as it best. Especially how Woodward and Curran masterly avoided giving any real and detailed answers. So often, a simple explanation assists in understanding. I have a few questions, which I hope will assist with some clarification, most of which can be answered with yes or no. Keep in mind, I'm not a politician. Uh, eventually, a vote will take place on the sewer project. The vote is for a complete sewer district one, uh, for the district phase one and two. Uh, comments by, given by the town board and Woodland Current, if no grants are extended for phase two, there will be no phase two, but there will be a, will be a phase one. Is that correct? Yeah. Yes. Good. <clears throat> if there's a negative vote, phase one will not be completed. Of course, also not phase two, but you indicate the grant capital is available for phase one. So why should residents of phase two vote on phase one? Why can't phase one residents vote on their own sewer phase one and for phase two residents vote on their phase two? That's more for the attorney, I guess. Oh, well, that's, that's, a, that's a logical question. Um, and my understanding is this. Uh, to apply for grants, you have to have an existing sewer district. Yep. So we already have $10 million to get that infrastructure into both communities, okay, sized mm -hmm. you know, for the whole community. Um, if we just did phase one sewer district, th then oh, yeah, okay. we try to convince <clears throat> someone to give us more grant money, oh. uh, they can say you don't have a sewer district. Sure. Uh, is my own saying correct that grant capital in the form of $10 million for phase one is allocated, or is it approved and available? Allocated, approved, or available? <laughs> the Complicated. difference. Okay, so there's 1998. Uh, Thirty-eight million dollars. Oh, I know that. The question okay. is: Is the ten million dollars allocated, approved, or available? Any of those words? <laughs> it's all of the all of those. All of them for yeah. this mm -hmm. project. Okay. Though. For this project. So no borrowing costs confirmed by well, town no. board and would incur it on the town meeting. Let me answer the question test. about the money because I mean you you're very knowledgeable about the topic. Everybody else may not be. So well, I think that answers a lot of questions. 1998, so. uh, thirty-eight million dollars was given. To to Westchester County by New York City. Okay, so a that, Northern Westchester Watershed Committee was formed. Yeah, I know that. Okay, that, this, the, this committee. Let's forget the political stuff now. It, I, I get to, this the, is not, to the point. This is the nothing to do with politics, sir. According to them and you, the $10 million doesn't have a co borrowing cost. I hear what he has to say because I don't understand all of it. Doesn't matter. Will get, you will get to that, trust me. Sir, sir, sir I, will have, I will have decorum. <laughs> okay, no, I will have, excuse wait, me, sure. I will have decorum. Just wait. Is there any okay. I will finish point? my statement about oh. the Northern Westchester Watershed Committee. That is the body that approves yeah. Somers Sewer District, it approved Peach Lake, it approved Bedford, and, yeah. and the other ones. Yeah. So it's not the county that decides it. It's this committee recommends it, goes to the planning department, they review yeah. it, it goes to the Board of Legislators yes. who vote for it. Absolutely. Thank correct. you. I know. Okay. Now the ten you million. You do. Dollars. I didn't know everybody else did. No, oh, well, I knew that already because we have been talking about it all the time. Yeah, the ten million dollars doesn't have any borrowing costs, right? That's what you're saying. None. That's None. Correct. Okay. So, if you do a bond issue of ten million dollars, are the costs associated with the bond issue or not? Yes. If yes. you were going to have a bond issue, of course. Ah. So, who's paying those costs? Wait, <laughs> are you talking about the $10 million that's the been allocated dollars. by the... The $10 million. To the DEP. The $10 million as that. a grant, but you do a bond issue for $13 million, or $10 million either way. The cost involved with the bond issue. 
Who is paying those fees? Well, there's no bond. You're, fa- not, you're not. No, wait, wait, wait. Only for phase one. You're not bonding. You're not bonding that ten million. There's a bond issue of, no, no, wait, in the pass, package you for thirteen million dollars. Wait, you're no, right. No, no. The bond resolution yes. that was adopted was for the WIA program, if you recall, never intended to be drawn on. Correct. And the reason that, why you're doing that, that, that is part to of that qualify application. the grant. Correct. Correct. That was part of yeah. the application packet to see if you could get the additional $3 million to bring it to $13 million for Phase 1. Right. And so I guess that's still an outstanding issue. So this right. is the... Well, we have an application. So right. But I, I just but want to say no something here. To borrow, right? No. There's the no application process no. is a very complicated and serial process. Mm-hmm. Yes, Each grant company, a grant, has their own prerequisites. I know. So we're doing things to essentially get ourselves teed up so we can make the application, be viewed as a credible <clears throat> applicant, yeah. and you know, get an answer. All right? So okay. to go back to one thing, though. Uh, phase one gets done. And we start to enter phase two, and it's not the way we want it as a board. We don't go forward. Yeah. I will not. I'm not going to sure. vote on something that's out of context, right? The, I agree with you. The state has created a framework as well. They won't let us go outside that framework. We would have to go through a whole uh, reapproval process. So there are, you know, there are fail safes in this process once you understand how this thing's going to roll forward. Is my understanding correct that the $10 million grant is, in fact, a reimbursement? Once the town has incurred the expenses and submitted the voucher for payment, the funds will be wired to the town upon inspection and verification of work completed. Is that correct? That, that's how the system works, yeah. So then who is pre-financing phase one? Because you don't get the money from the state or the, the, the county. <coughs> You, you advance the like let's call it the mobilization part of it so the town advances out of the general fund oh. the first invoice okay and then that's put to the county and the county sends that money no that's not true it is no it, only when it is completed no no the no. county will not well, give first, you any phase. money until it's completed no, and they approved progress of payments all along no I've spoken to the county, nor I was here. I've asked you the same question. Well, then it's I have it in writing. I, I was the attorney for Peach Lake, and he that's how it unfolded there. I have it in writing that this is what I just said. That's what the, the county does. You don't get any money until the voucher has been presented after completion of work. So but who, partial that means pay, what you're saying is you're going to finance permitted. it out of the it's general funds for the, state, the town. So partial payments are permitted. The work has to be done, like, say, but, mobilization to start, they, the contractor invoices that, the town advances that first payment, yeah. puts it through the county, and the county sends that reimbursement. So then you have a pot of money to pay the second invoice. So, so there's like seed money to get you going. Yeah, yeah, I understand but there that are part. progress payments all along the way. What you're saying is that the Commission of Planning of <coughs> Westchester County is incorrect, and you are correct. I'm telling you that the way, in my experience, that it worked is the town does no, not no. advance ten million dollars. Not what your experience is. That's I will figure it out. The factual. Let's well, not argue no, about that. It's very that. important. You think you know better than he does. We no, trust him. We will check it out. Let's move on. Finance charges Let's move on. Okay, sir. I see come some on. other hands. Come on. Come People on. want to come, come up and speak. Uh, Let's move on. You want to cross-examine, but just <laughs> move it on. Come on. Well, let me just say this. I mean, I'm not going to vote to advance the sewer district ten million dollars. Okay. Okay. I mean, that's simple yeah. as that. No, you know, I mean, that's a valid. That's a valid question. That's a valid question. It's but not it's not been in my experience that we worked with the county the in that way. <laughs> Have you applied for any other grants besides the ten million dollars for this project or for the town? For the town in the many, past year. Many. In the many past year. for this town, the, the not on this project. Right? No, I mean for the sewer. The, yeah. So oh, the studies were paid for by grants. I know that, but that's paid but, for but the county. So yeah. But you're asking. But you're asking. The SOMAS has SOMAS applied for any grants for payment of the sewer. Sir, what Besides is the, the point? $10 Could you get to the yes. point? Yeah. <laughs> I know you, you think that this has not been million. done well. Right. You stated that at the beginning. So, yeah. But could you get to the end? There's other people who want to speak. To answer that question, yes. All right. Water, there's a water quality improvement I mean, uh, grant that we applied for for uh, $3 million for 
specifically the Lake Lincoln Dale. Why Shatter not the low interest loans from the states, for instance? Yeah, we we, we may be looking you at those. Should have done that already. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that, thanks for your Thank time. You. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Yes, ma'am. Good evening, I'm Robin Anderson, 9 Cypress Lane. Um, uh, first of all, there's been a lot of comments that we don't need the um, sewer district because the sewers are not, or the septics are not contaminating our lakes. And those studies I've read, I mean, first of all, the septics don't remove pharmaceuticals or other toxins from the water, so that's all going in. And mm -hmm. my understanding of the studies that were done is that a large component of the pollution in the lakes is from the septics, is that correct? Yeah. Yes, in Shenorock yeah, in particular. Okay. And is there reason to believe that the well water in Lincolndale, Lincolndale is also being contaminated? Yes. Could be. Could be. We don't know. We don't know. Okay. Don't know. Um, unless, they, unless you test your own. And test, I, I live in Shenorock. So. Right. Okay. Um, the, the other, um, the $10 million. So my understanding is that comes from the watershed um, committee, and it will be lost if we don't use it in some timely manner. Um, and that's been confirmed. I also understand we might lose our ability to use the Peekskill Wastewater Treatment Plant if we don't move forward, and that, that would incur so additional costs also. That's another yes. good point. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes that, would be a, that would be a killer. That's Definitely. up to the state, the, the county board of legislators. <laughs> so we believe that we have that until we have the actual proposal. They can't give us the definite, but we believe that. We've been told, yes, it'll go through if this project fails. They have so much capacity, there are others who are looking who for might that. Use that. So we don't know what the future would hold. We might have it, but maybe not. Okay. We'll use it up. So. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Right. So, well, thank you. That was my three minutes. Thank you. <laughs> Let me just, I wanna, can I just, I just want to add something, just in terms of how I think through this. There are two strategic imperatives here. You know, one is to secure the sewer, the, the sewer, uh, the sewer capacity with Peaksco. And the other is to, you know, lay claim you know with a plan for the 10 million dollars you know we get into this debate as to whether the 10 million dollars is take or pay what got us here is that there's been a lot of uh, demand for, sewer, for for building sewers and the use of sewer capacity so when you know when Rick is at these meetings and we're at the Westchester meetings there are other supervisors there they're passing resolutions. They want access to these funds. They're looking at how you use the funds. The prerequisite is the first choice is, is that they want permanent systems in place, not maintenance programs, all right? In some cases, they have approved a portion of that for maintenance accompanying some sort of a sewer, uh, uh, a sewer or a permanent process. So that's what's going on. There's an urgency here. I mean, we've had people in the last year, I mean, this is a little bit off topic, but northern towns came in, in here and they wanted to essentially hijack sewer capacity that Heritage Hills has. <laughs> that's true. Right? We blocked that because in general terms, we have a, you know, a take or pay. We get first right of refusal. But we can't hoard this. You know, we could say, no, you can't have it, but I have to have a plan. So now we're starting to build plans. I mean, this is how this thing is creating momentum and why this thing is, is getting uh, the attention that it's getting at this level. And we have other communities that are building with plans right now. And we're, we're at this place right now where um, we cannot move forward unless we're perceived as credible. So the first thing to do is is to get a sewer district approved. In my mind, the second thing to do is lay, lay hands on the 10 million, okay, and get through phase one. In order to do that, you have to have a larger plan, right? You have to say, I'm gonna do this, this, and this, a larger district, we're gonna get funding, and it's gonna look like this. But there are fail safes from my point of view. If we get through phase one, and this thing starts to evolve in a way that you know, financially, it doesn't make sense. I'm not going to approve this. There's no way I'm going to, you know, allow this thing to get out of hand. I don't think anybody else would. All right? 
But that's my intent, okay? That's my intent. So we could, you could do phase one and not continue with phase two? We could stop. Yeah, but the rest of us are all going to be paying the county by it. Yeah, let's, let's get some order. If you have a comment, come, you come up to the mic, ma'am. Wait, I think so, oh, someone was talking first, Mr. Lutz. Did you want to Ma'am, did you want to come up and make your comment, please? So, I, I so just, everybody can hear it. Okay. No, you started. Let's, let's see what you have to say. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, want to hear, we want to hear from everybody. <laughs> we should get a portable mic for <laughs> the future. We're working on it. Yeah, I know. Uh, what, what, my question name was... Name and address, ma'am. Oh, Christiana Dondal. I live in Lake Lincolndale for the Thank last you. 50 years. Wow. God bless you. Um, if phase one is approved, can it end there and not continue with phase two? Is that what you're saying? It's going to be approved, phase one, two, and three, and then we start with phase one, right? Okay, so if, it, if the votes, if the vote approves um, the sewer district, it's going to go through no matter what. I mean, all phases will, will no, go through. But there's no specific timetable for that. We are, that will give us the authority to move forward, right? For you to receive yeah. it. But, but only when that financing when is in place, that's the point. So, what, yeah, the, so. the whole district will be formed. Only a small number of homes will be connected under phase one. We're not going to move forward with phase two until we secure additional funding. Oh. So, but, I mean, I heard someone say that. What's happening, everyone in the district will pay the county uh, O&M. That's, I think it's average $188 uh, no. per parcel. No. No. It's not the O&M, it's the buy-in. Buy oh, the buy-in, buy excuse me, yeah. So, the buy-in. But they get reimbursed First. for their pump outs in right. return. <coughs> so it's pretty much a wash. Yeah, that's a county program. That if you're in a sewer district, you're not connected, every three years you will be reimbursed the charge of pumping out your septic system. Oh. So. You know, my septic tank, I had never cleaned out for 43 years. Don't even say that. <laughs> I want to tell you something. Don't admit that. <laughs> when one of my leach fields went, I called the man. He came. He put in new tanks, took out the leach fields, put in new tanks. But he opened up my septic tank because he didn't believe me that I hadn't clean, had it cleaned out in 43 years. He thought I was lying. He said, what do you do to your septic tank? It's clean. I said, I use Ridex once a month, and I put the toilet paper in a container rather than down the toilet. And all my greasy pans, I clean before I wash them. Well, that's so, 43 years, I never had it clean. Now I gotta have it cleaned. Anyway. <laughs> Thank you. I am uh, George Lux from Lincolndale. <laughs> uh, just a couple comments. Um, I want to thank the board for having the fortitude to uh, delay this. And to me, at least, that proves that you listened to right. some of the comments we had in the last that. several meetings. That. Um, along the lines of what you just mentioned, it, it, th there were statements a while ago that you can't, you can't make a smaller uh, district, special district, but you mentioned a couple of meetings ago that you made a lighting district, and I, I looked into it, and it says that the town can form any size district they want. Um, secondly, <clears throat> with uh, reference to what your engineer said about meters, that's not exactly true. Um, they have wireless meters at Greenberg and White Plains. They don't have to go out. They all go to a repeater that goes to a station. Um, I don't know about the cost, maybe you're right, but th there's not a lot of maintenance on them because I know I work for a large housing authority and what you said is ex not exactly true. Um, I think meters are the most fairest. <coughs> are those, water, uh, those aren't water meters, right? You're talking about sewer Yeah, they meters. are water. They're, they're flow meters. Flow meters, but right. not, not water for your house meters. They have, they have both. Both, okay. But, uh, okay. I, you know, what he said, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I disagree with you on that. Okay, and, so all right. when you finish your I comment, think, we'll have a response for you. Sure. Right. I, I'm just stating, I don't yeah. actually even need a response. Um, it's not true, I can tell you that. Well, if we um, want to 
Correct. Well, let's see. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Secondly, uh, your, your attorney made uh, comments several meetings ago that uh, the little old lady, I used a scenario where the lo little old lady lives in a three-bedroom house. She's not going to live there forever. That's not true. I raised five kids, <clears throat> and I plan on dying in my house, and I'm hoping I get another 30 years anyway. Um, secondly, I, I didn't like the comment you passed. Uh, last meeting that this is insane, uh, your, your town of Armonk would grab a hold of this money in a heartbeat. I Did dare say that? probably the average person in Lincolndale probably brings home in a day less than you make in an hour. That's a blue collar working All right, area sure. uh, we'll get, we're getting a little off topic if you can just wrap <clears throat> it up. Okay, I, I just I didn't appreciate the comment as an as a employee of the town. Um, Secondly, I, I, I don't think anybody, I haven't heard anyway, anybody say that we're changing the zoning. I think what they mean is with the existing zoning you have, there are quite conceivably going to be a lot more houses built. I, I haven't heard anybody, I think, in, since the first meeting mentioned that you're changing no, the zoning. We just responded to it because someone did. Um, <clears throat> the other question I got, you don't have to answer tonight, is what was exactly done in Shenorock with their uh, stormwater? Because I've heard that that's not um, eligible for grants anymore. Because I know our lake management keeps saying they want the same thing done in Shenorock, but from what I understand, it's not available anymore. Um, you don't have to answer tonight, but... Um, and then last but not I least, I heard grant. you mention that yeah. the, the last meeting the at Lincolndale and uh, Shenorock drain in Amawak. Lincolndale doesn't move in, doesn't drain into Amawak, drains into Plumbrook, which goes over to Golden's Bridge, just a point of reference. And uh, again, I thank the board for listening to all the comments the last several meetings, and uh, hopefully you'll incorporate some of these suggestions. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, George. Thank you. So, Steve, you want to just clarify the water meters and uh, um, just on the, I, I appreciate the comment on water meters. Um, obviously, th there are wireless read systems, uh, and there are meters with no moving parts that have a very long uh, and robust life, the Omni meters by census being one example of them. Um, in those systems, uh, they are what's called a fixed base system. There needs to be an antenna installed. Uh, at a, such a height that it has access to read all of those meters across the area. Um, that obviously comes at an additional capital cost, so it's kind of one of those, uh, if metering was to be considered, we'd have to look at different metering types. Uh, is it a drive-by radio read system uh, versus a fixed base system? What are the capital costs associated with those? Meters with moving parts often have a you know 10 to 20 year life for their accuracy, uh, even those that are um, you know, fixed-based systems have batteries, their 10-year battery life at, at best. Um, so certainly we're not talking about going out and reading one, two, three, four, five, six on the meter, uh, but there are administrative costs there. Um, the uh, comment about stormwater is it had to do with the state changing its criteria for what types of projects were eligible for the grant funding that was used to put in the stormwater treatment system in Shenorock. It doesn't have to do with the, uh, the efficacy of the treatment system itself. It just has to do with changing requirements for the grant funding. We hope that those will change and that the town will be able to apply for similar infrastructure uh, in Lincolndale to help address that issue as well. So I just wanted to, sorry, yes. Yeah, so that's on our to-do list. So yeah, what, take it. What exactly was done there to remove the nitrogen and the phosphorus from yeah. the water? The, um, and I apologize for, for not, I wasn't the design engineer on that project, but I believe it's a hydrodynamic separator. Uh, it has a, a sediment four bay, so it's dropping the sediment that contain a lot of nutrients um, out of the water from the stormwater before it gets into the lake. So you're moving sediment and the associated nutrients with that. Thank you. Uh, anyone else with a comment? Yes, ma'am. Hi, I'm Hi. Stephanie McQuaid Geiger. I grew up in Lake Shenorock and I recently purchased a home with my husband um, in Lake Lincolndale. Um, I have a degree in chemistry and I teach high school science um, for a living. 
Um, recently, we um, had a crisis in Lake Lincolndale. The blue-green algae or cyanobacteria blooms made the lake unswimmable. Um, um, and we know that all of the water that gets pumped down our toilets and through our drains eventually will end up in our lakes or in our drinking water. Mm -hmm. um, and so I guess my question to you as somebody who, they said before, the way we learned how to recycle was our kids coming home. And as an educator, my question to you is, what are you going to do to help the community understand this better? And when are we going to be getting mailings home? Because I think, personally, I understand that the soap that goes down the drain is going into our drinking water and is going into our lakes and is affecting the health of the lakes. And the lakes are at this critical tipping point where we're about to lose Lake Lincolndale like we lost Lake Shenorock in the 80s. So my question to you is, why has there not been more of an effort from the board to educate the, you know, educate the residents public, yeah. in right. like a mailing I'm that went step home? That up right now. Um, and I understand. I've come to the public hearings, and I do appreciate the like, democracy in action, and that you've taken all of our, con you know, our concerns into consideration. And we've had what six public hearings. We're going to have so many more now that we're going to have a whole new proposal to do. Um, but I just think that <laughs> the a lot of the angst and concern from the residents has been that there had that people are saying that there doesn't seem to be a need for the septics when we know there's a clear e ecological disaster happening we are way beyond the capacity that the, our septic systems were ever meant to hold the soil is not meant to filter the bacteria when i moved into my home we did an inspection and the water was not potable in our home, the drinking water had bacteria in it, and a UV system needed to be installed into our homes in order to harm the bacteria enough that it wouldn't hurt us. But that means that we have to pay for the electricity of that system coming in, and we have to pay for new bulbs and the maintenance of our UV system just to make our drinking water drinkable. Mm -hmm. So, so you so, have a two-part question there. Yes, <laughs> and Sorry. we are uh, engaging a firm to do better on what we didn't do well enough, which is the public relations information part of it. So I think you can expect to see those sorts of things as time moves on in a fairly, uh, fairly soon. One of the things you said I just thought was really interesting because I came about through another person, a person who lives over there who is in the home inspection business, who put it so clearly as to why it's, uh, we, I believe we need the sewers. He said there's just not enough soil in an area as small as that to take all of what goes through the septic and keep it in the soil. He said there's it's just not enough soil. It's a public health crisis as far as I'm concerned. And I just thought so that was a simple way of putting it. The there's not enough soil to accept all of the septic, in his opinion, as a, you know, and I, I, I took it that, okay, now I sort of get it in a more simple basis. So thank you. So I just want to say two things. Yes. I, I, you know, I, I would, we would, I think we, we would love to work with you guys to come up with some sort of an education plan, and distribute, you know, information on how to best sort of navigate through this period of time where, you know, um, how to, you know, to, to reduce, you know, reduce some of the risks and increase some of the health uh, issues that we're dealing with there, mm -hmm. okay? So and we appreciate your, you know, your, you know, your energy about this. I'm not, you know, we're trying to do something, you know, we're trying to add value, we're trying to modernize this, this area. Um, I understand it's at a cost, and it's a serious issue when you have to deal about with cost, okay? But we're trying to strike a balance here, and, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll work with you the best we can. What? Wait, ma'am. Ma'am, someone's at the podium. You'll have your chance to speak. Uh, I, I do want to say you bring, bring up the, the issue. Personally, I believe this is a public health crisis. Um, I applaud you for the fact that you had your water tested. I've said this numerous times from, from this seat. If I lived in Lincolndale with the, um, the density of septic systems in proximity to wells, you're, you're a prime example of why they should be getting their wells tested as well. Mm -hmm. Shenorock doesn't have that issue anymore because they're on town water, thankfully. 
So, um, but December 3rd, there's going to be another public forum um, at the Lincolndale Clubhouse, 7.30 to 9.30. So okay. I would encourage you to stop by. Okay, thanks for your comment. Yes, ma'am. Is that your hand? Yeah, that's her. Okay, yeah, come on. Yeah, we took it. We'll get the. Hi, my name is Ellen Griffin, and I live in Lake Lincolndale. And this is just off the cuff. I don't have any, you know, nicely typed out written pages to read from. But I do want to, first of all, thank the board for attempting to bring us into the 21st century, caring about our uh, public health and the health of our lake. And I think you folks have been very, um, I commend you for opening up the conversation. There are, from what I can gather, a lot of naysayers who seem to be very vocal, so their voice I feel is heard more than the people who I would say are the yaysayers, like myself. Um, we've had to replace our septic at once and repair it once at a wonderful cost of $15,000 upfront because these people who do that work don't give you financing. They want that money right then and there and you don't have a choice. Um, we also do have that issue where other folks septics are very close to our well and that is of concern to us um, the lake being closed for one month out of the summer is a huge impact on mm. you know the finance the financial cost of operating the lake and um, getting off what I was going to say you know I'm not a politician I'm not a mathematician a scientist an engineer an attorney so a lot of this, I will admit, is over my head. So I'm just going with, very simplistically, I do want the sewers. I think we should have had them a long time ago. And just a quick little story. When we first moved up here over 30 years ago, my mother would come up from Long Island, where they have sewers, and she would do three to four loads of laundry a day in my house. And we were like, you can't do that. We're on septic. And she's like, what's a septic? Yeah. You know, yeah, so, you know, I just think it's time to do this. Thank, thank you for your comment, ma'am. Yes. Joe Luciana, Tim Walker Drive. She's still here. I would like the board to address Mrs. Anderson's questions and answer them truthfully because she's going to go back and say, hey, this is what the truth is, and all of those answers were not true. Not one of them was true. So I'd like her to come back up here, re-ask her questions, and I'd like her questions answered honestly. Well, you're not running the meeting, so. What? Oh, she doesn't want that because she got to hear what she wanted to. Okay. Number one, water meters. Shenorock would be based on their water usage. There would be no installation of any meters. You're going to base it on their water charge. So there's no cost at all because they're already red and you have the numbers. That's number one. Okay. You mentioned not going forward. So why don't you put in the petition to state that you won't move forward if there's not the funding that's in the petition. I think we could do that. Yeah. I mean, I think that we, I mean, added, we added that in the revision. We can do that. It's not an issue. So it's added to the revision that if you don't get the funding numbers you're stating. It, it, it's worded that we cannot go beyond the proposition of what we propose as local funding. So I think it's about $16 million that was proposed as the local share. We cannot go beyond that under any circumstance without going through a whole new process. But I thought it was 37 million total. That's no, it's 37 in grant. The local, the local share for both phase 2A and 2B, I think is 16 million. And then the outside sources add up to the balance. But the numbers that you're projecting include all the funding numbers. At completion, 
Right. It makes but a we, statement we don't, of what it looks like at completion. We can't go beyond under any circumstance what's proposed in the map plan and report as the local share of funding, which is a $16 million local funding bond, which would be then assessed over the entire district. So it won't cost the people more than $16 million. It won't cost the people more than $16 million, correct. I'll have to read it. Okay. Um, Mr. Morrissey, you mentioned about people testing your water in Lincoln deal. Do you have a shallow well at your house? Yeah. You do. Have you had your water tested? Sure. Okay. Now, all the gentlemen here, how old are each one of your septics? Because there was a comment at one of the meetings that the septics aren't made to last forever, but yet I'm sure most of you are on your original septics. Yeah, what does that have to do? Well, none of them voted themselves into a sewer district with higher was, taxes. I'd vote myself Same in. Here. I can assure you that. But Same no well, doubt you know, about okay. that one. If but it Joe, comes up Joe, from yes, question, yeah, I, right. I did replace my septic system. Joe, I mean, that's a bit you know, disingenuous. I'm not trying to create a hardship for you. No, uh, okay. okay. Uh, I'm on one acre. All right. Go ahead. I'm on uh, you know, and so, 0.9 of an acre, well, but I'm well, getting slaughtered here, so go ahead. Okay, but you're asked. So I'm on one acre. I've, I've, I've had the septic clean this, this month. It was like 550 bucks. I've had, uh, you know, I've had uh, repairs that have been done over the last few years that were expensive. I mean, that's, but the thing expenses. is, you, you know, what's the question? You want us, you, you want to Okay, us? no, no, I have some questions. I brought to your attention about Forest, 57 Forest Lane. Is somebody going to correct their assessment? Is the town board looking into that? Because it's a big problem with people who pay much higher taxes. Well, it's, it's interesting you bring that up and talk about ingenuous. Th that's a property that was under construction and hasn't been reassessed yet. So, yeah, their, their taxes will be increased. We did It sold in 06 for 100000 over its assessment. That's, that's 13 years ago. But it just okay. expanded for what we're told. Okay. Let's, you know, let's we, we, we've talked about the flat rate from the beginning, but it seemed the board didn't want the, to know about that. That, that was a big... That's, that's okay. A, we've oh. had public hearings. Pub, we lis we're listening to you. Now we have, we're down to two proposals. Okay. So do you like the flat rate? Yeah. What, what, what would you recommend, Joe? I would recommend a flat rate on all, but you can't, I know that's not going to get through the county. Well, on, on, on their show, on their well, part. But just to give you an idea, if you pass the district and you don't go past first phase, it's going to cost me 356 a year, okay? That, that's part of, you know, like you guys sell it as it's, it's $185. It's not. That, that's, that's part of the issue about this whole project. Well, it's 185 project. on average. The higher, you got it. You, you're right. It's <laughs> higher for you. And you're going to get your septic pump, I would think. <laughs> Right, and you'll be reimbursed. I get the septic pump for under 400, so uh, you know I'm paying three times. Anthony says, "Huh? <laughs> no, I don't want his guy." <laughs> Look, I, I just like with the metering. You know, there's always a reason why not. When Shenorock could have done metering for part of their bills, that would make it a little fairer. Also, well, listen, Ed, make that a suggestion. There might be something that comes up. That's what we're doing here, right? Okay. If you have suggestions, some of them are going to be worthwhile and work, some not. The other, the other issue out. is how come the board didn't try to correct assessed values before moving forward with this district? Correct. A lot of the homes don't have their anywhere near their correct assessed value. We talked about that at the last meeting. That's your opinion, and you can go into well, the assessor's well, office and, and have that so discussion. Do, that you can't do that without a town-wide revaluation. Well, that's why you I'm asking do, the board. You just can't well, do well, it. We can't. You area. can't well, pick out a house. Well, first of all, no, not a house. Okay, go ahead. So that's just uh, the way you said that, incorrect assessed uh, value. Yes. You know, what makes it incorrect? Being mm. way off. <laughs> well. In a your, house being worth 150 and not, assessed not at 199. Well, you're talking about How far? Not, you're not being market value. But, All right, we're not going to get into we're it. Not we're not into Okay. Comes from you. All right. See That's it. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes, sir. My name is Mike Sullivan. I live in Chenarock. Um, I came here tonight, I think, mostly to listen. Um, you know, there's a lot of information and misinformation swirling around. Um, and this has been helpful. And, and really, I, I would be remiss if I didn't um, 
say that I was grateful for this process because I do think there are a lot of communities in northern Westchester that are looking at a need to upgrade their infrastructure. We see this in Bedford Hills. We saw it in Peach Lake. Uh, development, development will necessitate upgrades and in, in infrastructure. And um, I think this process has resulted in, in a better proposal, ultimately. Uh, mm -hmm. Some things, I think, uh, are a result of re revisions that you've made, but even that we're going to vote on this, um, I think that's perfect. When we're a community that's going to be incurring costs potentially as a result of this, an up or down vote seems the most democratic approach to this. So I'm, I'm grateful not just for the process that's been initiated, but even um, how it's been improved as a result of these open mics and, and these, these public forums. Um, you know, the, the challenges that we face in Shenorock and, and Lincolndale are not specific to Shenorock and Lincolndale. You see them throughout the area. Yeah. Um, to me, it's not so much a sense of urgency about this $10 million and, and maybe it's, it's uh, finite availability. It's much more um, what other people have said. We see what's happened with our lakes. Um, that Lake Shenorock is no longer usable and hasn't been for decades, and that Lincolndale really is in crisis. So that's my sense of urgency with this. Um, I know the final numbers are, are not in yet, right? There's a process that uh, I think will culminate later this month, um, and I'm, I'm even glad that the Comptroller is involved. I think that makes this a better process as well. So the, the final well, vote Because he has to be. <laughs> yeah, he exactly. Has to approve it. But, but um, you know, at the end of the day, we'll have to see the final proposal before we all, you know, sure. make our votes. But um, before we reach that point, I just want to say that I am grateful that we're having this conversation. I would imagine uh, your lives would be much easier if you did nothing, right? <laughs> and, and so that you've chosen to, to demonstrate some leadership instead. Um, there are people in the community that, that see that and appreciate it. So thank, thank you, Mike. Appreciate it. I appreciate that. Another hand back there. Yes, ma'am. Just take your time. I'm Ada Minetti. I've lived in Shannarock for 50, almost 50 years. I just have a question. If the storm water system is not the fault of the people who have sh septic tanks, you have 118, you have Lake Road, you have Orton Estates, you have Shannarock, you have Lincoln Hall, Storm water comes from all that. It's the town of Somers that brings the salt into the streets in order to clear the snow. Why isn't the town of Somers partially responsible for that cost to Shannon Rock or Lake Lincolndale? Well, Roland, we can't because use- Because it's the town that we can't orders use general that. The town it's the town that orders that. We the don't order it. Municipalities can't be a member of a special district. That's, that's the answer. It's not permitted by state law. I mean, you know, it's going to cost people much more money, but we're getting that cost what? where Horton Estate is not. 118, which answer. has the same runoff. Mm -hmm. Lake Road has. Horton Estates, Lincoln there, uh, Lake, uh, okay. Lincoln I Hall. I think our uh, Steve Orange Jr. has a uh, response for you. I mean, I'm not a, they will be added. I'm just thinking about it. Yeah, I understand. And if there is electric, like we lose electricity for eight, uh, eight days, what happens to that? It goes, I'm at the bottom of the hill. I'm in one lakeside lane, the bottom of the hill. Will all that septic stuff come into my house? No. Not with no. sewers. You don't have a sewage? No. Not with sewers. Not no. going to back into? No. They've answered no, that. Because I had a problem. Problems. Wait. Let me answer it. Two years. Okay. Let, let us answer no. your uh, pollution p question. So there are, I want to answer your question about stormwater right. in the town. Right. Um, the town manages its stormwater out of the general fund. So, so for the is your question about why isn't the town overall responsible for not for the whole district, just for that part? Because that they say it's not the septics that are mainly the problem. It has a lot to do with 
The town is responsible for the stormwater. That's not a cost that's being borne exclusively by the residents of Lincolndale and Shenorock. Stormwater uh, off the roads, off of uh, properties, is managed by the town. The town pays for improvements and maintenance of its stormwater infrastructure townwide. That comes out of the taxes that you pay to the town already. Yes, yeah. but this not, is not the not cost efficient. for this no. sewer. Two things, sewer. right? The when you mention it, you say the septic, but you also mention the stormwater. So that's why I assume that we were paying. No, for that. no. Do you want to add? That's the, mm -hmm. the sewer is an improvement that is specific to that district, and so that's why that district pays for that improvement. Then she had a question about if there's no electricity, does it back up into a home? Sure. So the um, homes that are connected by gravity will flow by gravity to the pump station in each community. And that moves the electricity? That has an emergency generator. It will. I mean, will they use nine acres for an emergency area? That's not in the plan. No. No. It is, but it's an undeveloped parcel. I thought you could put some sort of emergency It's something that, that we'll consider, but I don't think it, it uh, is necessary in the plan. Okay. Or even at the bottom of the gravity, like where we live. At the bottom of the gravity uh, line is a pump station okay. that pumps the wastewater all the way out to Peekskill. That has an emergency standby generator that's permanently installed so that there's, uh, I assume, I don't know if, there, we've, if there'll be diesel or propane, um, but whatever the fuel there is, it's stored there on the site and an automatic transfer now, switch. Can you put that on the, the watershed area? Because I'm right there on the watershed area. Yeah, that would be part of, out of, of the final design site plan that would be developed so that that would be located. No, that would be on town property. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Good. All right. <laughs> you spoke well. Uh, well done. <laughs> <laughs> hey, none of that. <laughs> okay. Any uh, further questions on sewer district? Let's see. I'll Got try. That too. I think he had his hand up first. That's. <laughs> Hi, Tommy Smith, China Rock. Um, what's more for? How come we don't have our own attorney? I understand the town board has their attorney. Why don't Wake Lincolndale and um China Rock have their own attorney for the people? Because we're just going They could hire them. Why should we have to hire them? You're, 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 you're well, taking thirteen thousand dollars out for public you know because relations. if the town were to use town funds for that that, that attorney that would be, that attorney, wait, 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 wait. The town would have to, it would have to represent the entire town because well, all the town is paying You have a town attorney, it. but it doesn't seem he's representing the whole town. Well, he's representing he the interests of the town. He's representing the interests of the town board. Well, you, Which you, board you, doesn't may, have an okay, you may believe not, that those are contrary. We, we, we don't, don't know what the laws are. We're taking his word what the state controller suggests. Yeah, Tom, it's all suggests. going well, into the yes, public record we do for scrutiny. We trust him. And until you give information that he's not trustworthy, we trust him. So. Well, all the, um, everything keeps getting changed. And nobody here is a rocket scientist or a mathematician. Well, you got some smart people right behind you there, wait a second. <laughs> well, they're right too. You know, everything keeps getting changed. And you well, talk the language we don't understand. In response to the concerns of people that we've heard, it's being revised based upon those concerns because you want people to believe that not everyone will be in favor of it no matter what. But you, everyone has the right to believe that one, it is accurate, of course. Everyone has the right to know that you're minimizing that cost as much as you can. 
I appreciate the woman right there. I remember my dad in Yonkers after my mom died. He was living by himself, and the water bill was coming in. It wasn't even that high, but I remember him being so concerned about that. He didn't know how he was going to get to it. I appreciate those concerns, and that is our job, to minimize those costs and to look for every possible avenue because you have a right to that, and you have a right to, to believe that it is as accurate as possible. Nothing is perfect. You can always find something, but it's going to be as accurate as possible. You have the right to that, and you should trust that. If well, all that doesn't work, you know, you can think you that they never went to the moon, too. With the absentee ballot, you hear is not suggested. That's a state, that's a state law, though. The happen was allowed in other towns. Because it's used for uh, we, elections, we not. We don't know that as, as a okay. group of people. Well, that's why we asked him. He's on your side. He's, well, he's on the town side. He's on the town side. <laughs> we're on the, we're town, on the town side. Well, all right. If you hold that position, then nothing no, that we say is going to be believed by you. But, but you also a, serve. Hold it. You also serve on a town affordable housing committee. I did. Yes. And people and believe that you. Meetings? What do we do with those? I don't meetings? know. I was but, there for six months. But, right. Nothing was done. We went there. We sat there for 10, 15 minutes. And right. we're, we're on the sewer now, though. Okay. Okay. Thanks, no, he brought up the affordable housing, not me. You're right, yeah, and you your doing? job there okay. was to do what so you're doing. So we're talking about the sewers. Okay. I think we should have our own attorney. You and can hire that person. For, added up 30, 32 million. What's okay. No. Okay. Why, you should have a lawyer? No. We don't. We, so, All right, we're, we're getting, we're getting. Right. Tom, if you want to finish your comments, please. Yeah. So we can we move on. Board, uh, thing for public relations. Spend thirteen thousand dollars. We could afford an attorney for the people. We have an attorney. For Thank you for your opinion. An attorney for the people. Okay. He's an attorney for the town board. Okay. okay. In your opinion. Okay. It is my opinion. Yes, it is. To it. Yes, and and we've heard. No. We've heard you. And we've heard you. Uh -huh. Thank you. Oh, Linda, come on up. All right, I'm going to try to be quick. Linda Luciano, Shannon Roth. Thank okay. you. <coughs> appreciate it. And I'm Walker, sure right. everyone right, else so in the room would. Too. Just, so, Linda, we appreciate your comments. <laughs> <laughs> Do um, I have to put my ball vest on? <laughs> um, okay. So we just brought up Just hit us with the facts. Hey, mm -hmm. stop interrupting me, guys, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, so we were just talking about absentee ballots, mm -hmm. okay? How they're not mm -hmm. allowed. Mm. So... Um, Section 84 under town law, law says that you can have absentee ballots for special elections. You have to do a personal registration of the voters. So since we have plenty of time now, since the vote has been postponed, we need to do a personal registration of voters so that people have the opportunity to vote for their property. I mean, I have the whole thing I can read, but I don't want to because it's going to take up more right, time. So the, pro Let me the problem is, is that, that Section 84 allows for personal registration of all qualified mm -hmm. electors. Yes. Qual the definition of qualified electors is anyone who resides in the area, whether they are an owner or just a, a lessee, a renter. 209E says only owners can vote in mm -hmm. the referendum. Mm -hmm. So, and 209E says wherever there's a conflict with any other section of law, 209E controls. So you can't have personal registration which is authorized by Section 84 mm -hmm. for qualified electors when 209E says it can only be owners. So the state controller has mm -hmm. opined that that conflict means that only owners can vote and you can't have absentee ballots. Now, having said that, mm -hmm. because now the town board is considering going to a mandatory referendum, mm -hmm. which takes it out of 209E, and puts it into another section, I forget the section, it's not section 84, mm -hmm. there's a chance that when I look at that and I ask the state controller that question, mm -hmm. that he may say, okay, now you can have absentee ballots, 
because you're out of 209E. Mm -hmm. So it's an, okay. still an open question. Okay. And frankly, yeah. but okay. we're looking at it. Okay. And frankly, I, I would prefer to have yeah. absentee yes. ballot. Would the more be the fairer better. because yeah. the, yes. we can, we will. But sure. And especially if it's in the winter, you have a lot of snowbirds. That's exactly right. Yeah. right. So okay. All right. No one disagrees with that. If we can do it, we're going to do it. Okay, great. Um, I just want to clarify something. So if the sewer district is formed, okay, and you go ahead with phase one, and it's for $10 million, and what comes out on budget, if it goes over that $10 million, phase one residents would then have financing, correct? Yeah. Obviously, they would have to, okay, if the money is borrowed, right? Okay, so um, because it was voted yes for the whole project, at any point you could go ahead with phase two. Well, no. without having, okay, we're, I'm just trying to clarify what's being said because we've heard different things. So phase one's done whether they end up having to borrow money to finish it, whatever. And then a year later, we find out we have no funding. Can you go forward with phase 2A or 2B? Only to the extent of the $16 million that So you can continue. Only, to only up extent, to that 16 only million. Only to that extent. Okay. But I will. That's what I could, thought. Or the board could no. choose not to go forward at all. Right, but, but that's what I thought. cannot go beyond the local share. All right, so it can be started without having, having any funding. If, if it but made it any engineering sense to do that. Right, okay. I don't know. Nope, I just wanted to make sure. Um, so, Linda, I just want to s clarify. I mean, this is an iterative process. I'm going to operate. My do you know my my intent is to operate within the context of what we've been chartered to do. Right. You know, we might. We, I'm not going to borrow 16 million. To st I'm not going to borrow 16 million in phase two, and then stop in phase three, and then just overweight this thing, and have an incomplete project. I, I mean, that, that's going to be impossible to do. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're going to try to create this to keep the lowest cost. You know, we want to come in under the budget. Well. Right? No mm -hmm. can't guarantee that. Right. But that's what we're going to strive to do. Okay. All right? Mm -hmm. We're going to try to have the same proportion of grant money, the borrowing, so we get to a path where we have to be. If not, look, we're not going to do this. I know you're saying that right now, but in three, four years, <laughs> might be a different story. I'm not, well, okay. Well, yeah, I mean, we don't know. I, I don't we have no idea. We have no idea. Nobody um, knows the future. So, right. So, um, question on hookup fees, because the comptroller's office says that hookup fees are not supposed to be in the overall cost of the typical property. So, is that something that's coming out of the engineering report in our, in, with our costs? To my knowledge, the hookup fees are part of the project. Mm -hmm. It's being, it's being amortized among everybody. But in order for the town to be able to do that, it has to have easements from each property owner. It cannot go on property without an easement permitting it. So if there's a particular person who doesn't want the hookup to be driven by the town, they don't give the easement. Okay, so it says our hookup fees for a town water or sewer district include in the estimate for the cost of the typical property, it says no. Cost for this purpose does not include hookup fees, which are not reoccurring charges imposed to fund the district or extension. Hookup charges are the responsibility of the owner of each property connecting to the system. A town may use its employees to connect the property to the water or sewer system and charge the property owner for the cost of these services. Isn't, isn't yeah, well, that, would just, that would just bring the cost down, not up. If we had, if we took well, then, that out. Well, then residents would have to be, it says residents are supposed it. to, no, 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 I know that, but they're including the hookup fees in the overall debt. Yes. And it's not supposed to be in there. It says it. No, it, all it's saying is that it, it doesn't have to be part of the calculation of the typical cost. It has to be part of the debt. Where does the money come from otherwise? It says, does not include hookup fees, which are not reoccurring 
recurring charges imposed to fund the district. Where does that say extension. that? Is that in the frequently? On the comptroller's website. On the comptroller's website. So yeah. I'm just saying look we need it. to look into this because, okay. you know, it's just a All question. Right. Okay, you're right. I, I'm, I'm, Let's see. Okay. Um, will an impact study be done? An environmental impact study? Im yeah, an impact no. study. And no. why isn't that being done for residents so that people know whether or not they have to pay to replumb their homes? Because an environmental assessment is being done. Okay, environmental assessment, but an impact study it, is something different. An impact study is if the board <coughs> was to conclude that the environmental impacts of this project were uh, possibly harmful to the town, then it would only in that case order an environmental impact statement, which would grossly increase the charges to the residents <coughs> for that statement to be prepared. It's like a telephone book. What's being done here is an environmental assessment, which hopefully will lead to a negative determination because I think the town board will probably conclude that this project is helpful to the environment, not a detriment uh, to it. Okay, so you're saying, so an environmental assessment has not been done to date? Well, it has. It's oh. part of the map plan and report. Okay. If you look in that document, even the one you have, and it will be also in the revised one, there is a long-form environmental assessment. Okay, so obviously an impact study is not being done. Okay. Um, an environmental impact <sighs> statement is an alternative to the environmental assessment Area. form. So we're complying with the state environmental quality review law. Don't misinterpret what I'm saying. Okay. We are complying. Okay. Um, do... And it needs to be done in your FAQs, whatever, but people need to understand that um, their homes may have to be replumbed, okay? Mr. Barbagallo told one resident back in August that most likely he will have to have his house replumbed so that the wastewater flows towards that sewer main. So. There's, there's extra costs to residents that are going to be happening. Um, just like if somebody has only a 50 amp electrical panel, <coughs> okay, or if they have a fully loaded 100 amp panel and they're going to need to upgrade to a 200 amp panel because they need a grinder pump. So there's extra costs that people need to know. We're trying to let people know what costs are involved. Because um, obviously Shenrock, majority of the people are going to have grinder pumps. Um, and what I'm told is they're last, they last eight to ten years. Um, okay, so well, another... Wait, is... What about grinder pumps? Are they... The most properties going to have them? How do you know that? Oh, it's based on gr gravity, right? Based, based on the preliminary design. 75% of Shenrock would be drained by gravity. Okay, so that's not most. But if a, if a pump fails, mm -hmm. the district will drop in a new pump. There's no cost to the local, to the resident. Oh, yes, it is. It's in our debt. It'll be, the sewer district's paying for There's it. There's no cost to a particular resident whose pump fails. The no. district will maintain. Of course, that's the residents. I understand that, but you make it sound like it's a, an additional cost N that no. an individual resident. No, not grinder have. pumps. I'm not talking, no, I haven't okay. mentioned that. Uh, but when, when you say sewer district, that is us. That's the residents. We are paying but for it. But it's in the numbers you see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I knew that. Right. But this is the takeaway. The takeaway mm -hmm. you're trying to get at, are there going to be incremental costs that are going to be out of pocket mm -hmm. for some residents right. for, certain, for, you know, for, things. for certain things that have to be done? Right. Some things are going to be picked up by the district. And well, that, but those confuse them. Everything's going to, so. well, not everything, whatever, whatever, okay. <laughs> um, so it might, it might be helpful to say, here are all the costs that the district will pick up. Right. Here are hypothetical possible costs that it wouldn't. So that way a person could separate. Is that what you would think would be helpful? Mm -hmm. That's fair. So mm -hmm. therefore, everyone would have all of those, and it's going to be in that right. report. It so needs, a person would know, here's what might happen right. if you have bad luck or whatever but, you got an old but, house. But, but didn't you we'll think about up. this with originally in the report? Why wasn't that done? I mean, that's a, that's, that's a big factor. 
in this. Um, okay, I think, uh, let's see, hold on. Da, 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 da. <sighs> okay, so going forward with this, obviously we'd like to be notified by mail. People don't get emails, people don't have computers, don't, people don't read the newspaper. We need to get mailed something so people know what's going on. Every, we'll every on resident that. will be getting a mailing to, which will include fact sheets, maps, and, and cover letter. Okay, and when will that be, or an estimate? We don't know until the report's done, right, okay. Um, the fact sheet, okay. There were errors in the fact sheet that we pointed out. <coughs> we sent in questions to you. There's, there's a new fact sheet gonna be okay. put out there, which address some of those things. Okay. Um, Okay, uh, da, 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 da. oh, are you gonna be posting addresses again in the newspaper? Um, I went to our town attorney to find out if we had to do that again. We asked the state controller. We asked and the answer is no. Okay. We will be listing addresses, but not. No names. No names. Okay, because I know Just some residents were very upset about section, that. Lot, and block. Perfect, okay, good. Um, Okay, um, all right, so I know you posted a letter on the website today, okay, that went out. And uh, we weren't too happy about some of the things that you had stated in there at, in, in the last paragraph um, about quality of life within our neighborhoods, okay? Our quality life is just fine, but everybody, has a different opinion on what quality of life is, I suppose, yeah. but I don't see how getting a sewer is going to improve my quality of life. Okay, well we, well, we just heard tonight from a resident in Lincolndale whose quality of life was impacted by her septic system leaking into her, her well. So a sewer in Lincolndale is right. certainly going to uh, listen her quality of life. You, you're my right. My opinion. You're right. Listen, but phosphorus is... didn't like it. No, no, no. Phosphorus has been going into my drinking water this whole year. Rust has been going into my drinking water, okay? You have a filter on your house. As a homeowner, you have to do things. Mm -hmm. that, with anything, if your roof leaks, you've got to fix it, okay? So you're right, everybody has different quality of life opinions, I suppose. Um, but I just wanted to let people know that this is not about the people who are for the sewers or people are against the sewers. This is about hardworking, decent human beings in this town who love their community and want to be able to afford living here versus the ongoing deception, I know you say you're not deceptive, of the board <laughs> and the increasing yeah. lack of credibility. It's not deceptive. Okay, listen, the whole thing, the way this whole thing was laid out, a lot of people aren't happy about it. We want to see you do the right thing the right way for us um, and we need to do something about the stormwater runoff issue. And um, that's all I have to say. Okay. Thank so you. Thank you very much. Okay. <coughs> yeah, but people at home can't. You, you want to just, we'll, re, we'll repeat it. Yeah. Go ahead. Stay there. Um, is someone who has a pool, when the pool gets too full and they want to drain it, Where can they drain that water? Because I have, a uh, number of years ago, they put in nice drain pipes along the road, and I have a, someone <laughs> who drains their pool water into the drain, which runs into the lake. Oh, yeah. yeah. So the question is. draining it into my yard first, until a neighbor told me what he was doing, mm -hmm. and then the people that came to drain the pool went across the street and drained it down the pipe into the lake. I want to repeat the so question. your question is, if a person has a pool in Shannon Rock or Lincolndale and sewers go in, how is that pool water when it has to be drained? What happens to it or what should happen to it? Rather, it shouldn't go in your yard. Could you tell us that? Uh, it's not, it, it doesn't have anything to do with the sewer. 
Because it's going to go into the stormwater basin. Stormwater. Right. I'm not sure that that would be a permitted discharge to the <laughs> stormwater system. Um, I would defer to the Department of Health on what the requirements for emptying a pool would be. I don't want to, to misspeak, uh, but I know that sending it directly into the uh, stormwater system, especially if it still contains chlorine, is absolutely an illicit discharge. Mm -hmm. So that would be a complaint to uh, the Worcester County Department of Health. Okay. Um, Repeat. Joe Luciano, Tim Walker Drive. Average depth of a sewer main going down the street. Not their connection, but the street. Okay. Uh, phase one on your new plan. Will it show that they're paying financing? Yes. And it'll be on paper? Yes. Okay. For you, the woman, I don't know if she's still here. She said about her well being contaminated. You can go on a 100-acre parcel, go right in the middle. Nobody's ever lived there. You could drill a well, and it can have bacteria in it. The bacteria could be in the rocks. It could be in however it's getting down there. That has dip. Her house could have been sitting for 10 years, and the bacteria can be from that. The bacteria could be in the water lines at a house. It doesn't have to be that it came from the well, from the well or anybody's septic. It is the truth. Okay, so the question from the lady in the back was, uh, yeah, they test, they routinely test for that because it's a swimmable lake. Those results are at the health department. Uh, we haven't done um, the extent of testing of the lake as we did in Shinnerock. Well, I spoke with the guy who was there testing the water because I didn't know, strange truck, you know, and I, I just walk up and I say, oh, hi, how are you, you know. I say we're having, oh, what are you doing here? And they told me they're testing the water, and they tested it, and it had no E. coli in it, because I said we were having problems. So, mm -hmm. and I don't remember the name of the company, actually, but um, that's what we are doing. All right. Okay, Steve, you can answer a couple of those questions. <coughs> um. Just since I was answering from over there and, and not for the mic for the folks at home, the average depth of the gravity sewers is estimated to be six to eight feet um, in the streets. The force main can be shallower uh, and would be shallower, um, be about four feet deep, four to five feet below the frost depth. Um, we agree that uh, the report could have been clearer about the inclusion of capital financing in phase one, and that will be corrected in the revised report. Uh, yeah, but it was, it was always in there. Was it not it, on that It was table. not as clear as it could it be. It was in different yeah, spots. It was, right. it was not as clear so, as it could be. Right, right. So that wasn't an omission. That was just under the It wasn't laid out as well. It as was clear. not as clear. So now it's going to be clarified. Right. That, that, among the other comments uh, that will be incorporated into the updated map plan report based on input from the public, yes. Um, it, is, it is a very good thing that uh, there wasn't E. coli uh, detected at the beach in, in Lake Lincolndale. Um, obviously, uh, there's a much broader concern than just E. coli within water quality um, for Lake Lincolndale. Uh, when we have tested uh, Lake Shenorock, we have found bacterial contamination there uh, that uh, is from a variety of sources, stormwater being one of them, and uh, it is possible that septic is another part of that. That could be through the groundwater. Uh, or it could be a failing septic system that then washes off from the surface into stormwater. So there's a variety. Um, obviously, the condition of Lake Lincolndale is not as bad as Lake Shenorock yet. Um, and, and that's a, so that's a true statement. That's not inconsistent with, with what we've said. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, I'm going to move on to our next item on if, the agenda. If I may. Yes, it, just, so, just so, here's what I think. If you believe that the Lake Lincolndale or Shenorock and each individual homeowner and the environment in general is better only if there are septics, then you shouldn't vote for this when the vote comes up. If you believe at any time each home, Shenorock, 
Lincolndale and the general environment is better off when there are sewers, which is what the EPA and the Department of Environmental Conservation and the Department of Environmental Protection in New York City believe. If you believe that, then this is the time to do it. Whenever that time comes up next year with the money that is available before things get worse and monies aren't available and everything gets more expensive. That's how I see it. Every report should be accurate and we appreciate the input of those who seek to accomplish that goal and we should make every attempt to keep the cost per person as low as possible and not, so that nobody has to get forced out of their home just for doing the right thing. And that's what I think about this in a nutshell. Thank you. I understand right, what you're saying. We're going to move on. Uh, dialogue, if you're not at the mic, um, mm -hmm. it's, it's kind of hard to do. But we've answered most of your questions, I believe. Okay. I hear you. So um, without further ado, I'm going to move on to uh, town board uh, item number five, which is the uh, Bureau of Fire Prevention <laughs> proposed addition. So if you recall um, back in the summer, I believe it was, the building inspector who was the um, chairman of the Fire Prevention Bureau came before us with a proposal to change some wording in section 26-2, powers and duties. <clears throat> and they were seeking authority to take certain actions to improve access of their equipment onto people's uh, property. And um, it seemed just a little, um, to me anyway, a little overreaching uh, where they were going to get insurance companies involved and make reports. So um, what the board really advised them to do was go back and um, take another look at it. So what we have here um, is their reworking of, of the section. So it now reads, the Bureau of Fire Prevention will review any proposed installation or alteration or replacement of existing obstructions that would restrict fire department EMS access to any property in the town of Somers to ensure the safety of the public and first responders, personnel, and apparatus. The Bureau of Fire Prevention will have the authority to notify the owner and any tenants of a property of any condition or conditions that exist on the property that would prohibit or significantly hamper fire department from fulfilling their duties to life and or property safety. So at this point, if we, um, need, we would have to set a public hearing Correct. to adopt this into the code. Mm -hmm. Put it on the consensus agenda scheduled public hearing. Okay, so we'll. Sure. And on the consensus agenda goes the setting of the public hearing. Not next the vote. week's consensus not the vote. agenda. Not the vote. To schedule the public hearing. Yeah. Okay, so CA to set public hearing. Okay. That doesn't delineate any penalties or anything, does no. it? No. It's so they're going to notify people that this is could be a problem for right. safety. Yeah, they, they they removed any reference to yeah. um, informing insurance companies. Yeah, and exactly. What happened? What, what hopefully happened. people will comply. Right. Okay, um, so we'll put that in the consensus and set a public hearing for that. Thank you. Okay. All right, number six, a land donation request from Somers Realty. So Somers Realty um, owns additional acreage up behind their, uh, our planned hamlet. There are um, two parcels actually. Uh, one's a 33 acre parcel, one's a 37 acre parcel. Um, it is behind the Avalon and runs south along right. the North County Trail right. down to basically uh, green, I can't read that. Green, green tree. tree. Green tree. Green tree. There it is. So uh, myself, Steve Wolfel, uh, Rich Williams, Andrew Johnson, and Mike Barnhart um, hiked the property um, a couple of Fridays ago, and it's, basically virgin woods 
Um, there's an old form road that runs through most of it. Um, there is one area at the north northeastern part of the, the first parcel that does have some uh, junk on it, an abandoned truck, and we really don't know how much other material, but it's it's really limited to uh, maybe 100 square feet. So uh, what I would like to do at this point is refer it out to um, our t engineering department, you know, highway, uh, parks department, open space, um, planning, you know, all interested parties for their uh, input. Um, Did any particular use strike you as you're walking it that, or is it more of, well, we can preserve a lot of open land and it sort of goes along the trail and that'd be a good thing? Yeah, there, there would be, um, well, let me put it this way. I think zoning would permit about 15 um, homes on there and it's, I think it's R. R zoning? R80, yes. So, you know, figure those those type of lots, mm -hmm. you know, could build a pavilion, um, um, maybe small field. Um, there could be future uses for it. Um, but, you know, once again, I, I, I don't know all the uses it could be. Right, That's why course. we refer it out right. to everybody. Right. Um, but... You know, as you know, this town board has always been a strong proponent of securing open space. Absolutely, um, and One the, the best parts here. And the, what the planner pointed out was was interesting. She said, um, "Well, starting on the west side or south side of uh, Route Six, with the um, Windsor Farm development, there's open space there. There's open space across the street, uh, just south of Hidden Meadows." Then you have, um, you know, you come up to Baldwin Place, you have a lot of commerce. Then this abut, then there's more open space behind <coughs> there, you know, and to um, really retain the character of the town, um, this would forever be open space and not developed. Yeah. So it's not contiguous to any of those other parcels, is it? Well, it's. Uh, Avalon is open. Yeah, it is. There's an, actually an access road that. Um, that uh, Somers Realty built that goes right onto the property over here. Yeah. There's a map here. Yeah. So um, I just thought I'd bring it to yeah, your attention. Good. The, yeah, let's see what people think. The uh, financial impact to the town um, is about $34,000 in taxes. Lost. So uh, that, Lost. that comes right off the tax roll. And that's inclusive of county and um, Town tax and the fire district and school tax. It's, did you say inclusive or exclusive? No, inclusive. Inclusive. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to refer that uh, out to um, all our involved agencies. Okay, next order of business the town clerk presents the 2020 tentative budget to the board. It was received. So you got our our town board uh, tentative budget. All right, so the process was I submitted the supervisor's budget. Um, we, then we had public um, hearings with each department. Budget hearings. Budget, excuse me. I have public on the brain. Um, budget hearings with each of the department heads. And the tentative budget we are putting forth um, has a zero tax increase in it. So um, that is formally filed with the town clerk. And you, Patty, you want to tell us what our next steps are for the, um, the budget? Well, next week we're going to put it on the agenda to schedule a public hearing for the December work session and to adopt, we're also going to adopt sal uh, salaries for the electeds. Okay. And then the public hearing will be held on December 5th with a hopeful adoption of December 12th. Okay, and we have to adopt the budget by December 20th. 20th. Right. Okay. So if we don't adopt it on the 12th, we'll have to have a special meeting. Right. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, 
Yeah, we, we've been asked by the county to submit our uh, adopted emergency plan uh, for the town of Somers. Um, we have an emergency plan. We've worked on it, tweaked it, but I've never brought it back to the board. So um, you've all been sent it. Um, it's, uh, we have an introduction, comprehensive approach, government responsibilities. Um, and frankly, I think we do a pretty good job in emergencies in this town by activating our EOCs and our shelters. So I would like to make a motion to authorize the supervisor to adopt the emergency plan for the town of Somers. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. So moved. Do we have an Office of Emergency Management? You're looking at it. Because yeah. it says Office of Emergency Management is responsible for maintaining updating this plan. So yep. that is the supervisor? That, that's and the supervisor. And anybody he can draft. <laughs> well, you know, we did um, we certainly look for volunteers to take on that role, but um, yeah, that that is my role. and. Frankly, I've had quite a bit of uh, experience in my county uh, <laughs> career on the uh, Indian Point emergency response uh, team. So, so when you have an office meeting, it's kind of <laughs> it's whenever you want. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Not well attended. Okay. Um, all right, that moved. That was moved. Next item is authorized supervisor to execute the third proposal to provide traffic consulting services from Frederick P. Clark Associates um, for the review of the new school in Somers, New York, in the amount up to not exceeding $9,600 plus out of pocket expenses and any attendance at meetings. Do we get reimbursed for any portion of that $9,600? I don't know, Roland, is that something we pass along to the applicant? Yes, you do. Yeah, yeah we do. Yeah. All of them. They pay for it. And, fr and frankly, Absolutely. You know, the more traffic study we can do on a project this large, um, mm -hmm. you know, I would be for that. So I'll put that on the consensus. Mm -hmm. Okay, current vacancies on our boards. Um, we had a lot of interested people here and making comments tonight. I and uh, would hope that they take a look at uh, some openings on our boards. We appreciate your input here and would appreciate it on our, uh, our boards. So we have two on the Library Board of Trustees, but it ends 1231 this year. So does that mean that they're down two people or they just have two people? It says vacancies. Well, they will be vacant. Um, it says and to a term ending this year, right. implying that <coughs> no, like that's, the the for that's, the, that's where we change the language. Is that's the upcoming term. So it's upcoming vacancy. Oh, I see. Upcoming I see. vacancies. Expiring this year. Okay, yeah. gotcha, gotcha. Thanks. Okay, and yeah, we have a routine um, that we send each of these members a letter thanking them for their service. Yeah, sure, definitely. Okay, I see how you change it, right? and upcoming yes 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 I think uh, Kim and Patty gave that a good looking over it's a good idea more clear okay so uh, planning and engineering for review and comment the removal of Plumbrook Bridge M and the removal of Dean's Bridge P um, you know basically uh, plans have been submitted um, to the town are engineering office is on top of it I cannot tell you when they'll take place but um, what's M and P stand does that mean anything you tell me <laughs> Anybody know? I think it's a designation by the county of bridge M and bridge P. Yeah. Oh, okay. so just a point of clarification oh, on this so M and O where's the N and M yeah you know, I looked at the documents. Um, you know, they talk about the removal of the bridge, and they talk about the rebuild of Plumbrook and uh, the and, and not Dean's Bridge. I mean, essentially, Dean's Bridge is absent. Right. I'm okay with that, but I'm just trying to get some clarification. At you know, where are they moving? You know, they essentially have in their in their uh, the design uh, an idea 
is to remove the both both bridges, mm -hmm. which is which is fine. Yeah. But they want to build Dean's Bridge. They want to build uh, Plumbrook. They're they're obligated to build um, Plumbrook. Right. What about Dean's Bridge? Yeah, and whether that happens in my lifetime, I I don't know what the timing of that will be. Um, I did have a conversation <clears throat> with um, a deputy commissioner, at DEP, and they said, and the letter is attached to the materials you guys got sent, and, you know, agreeing that in fact they they are responsible for rebuild, um, but it's not in this this year's or the next four-year capital budget. It would have to go in the the next ten-year. So I'm just going to say I'm not advocating for Dean's Bridge. I think it's kind of windy. Oh no! Well, Dean's Bridge is like it's it's done. You know that they're going to remove it, and and that'll be that. Okay, that's the uh, point I want to make. An yeah. interesting fact I heard from uh, our, uh, uh, from Steve Wolfel. He said they're going to take the Plumbrook Bridge and bring it down. Um, I don't know if it's off the coast of. Long Island or Southern Westchester, and the, place it. it, place it, sink it in the in the uh, sound, uh, and turn it into a reef. Oh, so that would part of uh, yep. the Tappan Zee Mario Cuomo. That seems to be a very nice yeah. way of taking a bridge and throwing it in the water. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Somehow it's it's good. <laughs> Seems to me like littering, but it's good. <laughs> right. yeah. well, they they put a nice spin on it. Let's put it that way. <laughs> Now there's another bridge over there off 138 that used to be part of the old railroad system. Yeah. Now I know in Lewisboro they're interested. Michael Barnhart, he's interested. Rick Warren, who's on our uh, Energy Environment Committee, he's interested in somehow connecting that to a pathway up to uh, Baldwin. Do we know anything about that bridge or what's happening with it? No, well, that would obviously be the MTA. They they may be going through the same process with the MTA because I can't imagine that bridge is in any better shape than no, Plum Brook or Dean's Bridge. No, either fortify it or yeah, or right. It. But that's yeah, that's something. Um, oh, we could look into. Yeah, could you ask? Maybe Kim could make a phone call on that or something. Just see what the situation is and do they have any plan? Or, and it's Dan over in Lewisboro who's who uh, emailed me about that. Right, well, you know, we're still grappling with uh, getting that trail over into Somers. We already have the trail right. that go, we would have to recreate something because Kennedy doesn't want, that, that trail goes right through their campus. Mm -hmm. And then you get onto the DEP trail, which comes up past the school and over at Plumber, uh, over Brick Hill. Um, and then, it, then you hit a stone wall at Lincoln Hall. Right. Which is private property, right? So, but it would be pretty cool to connect them all and be able to go from one place hey, that's, to the other, right? That's, into the that's train not station. off our plate. That that would be a really that's good. That's not plate. off our plate. You know, not everybody loves the trails in Angle Fly or the North County Trail or all that. But for those who do look for something like that, that's something unique that Somers can offer to someone looking to move here and wants. You know, be closer enough to New York, but really rural and trails that they can right. walk. You, you could go on a bike trail um, from Bowling Place down to the train station. Right. That's exactly right. Yeah. That mm -hmm. would be pretty good. It would be. Okay. Uh, proposed consensus agenda one, two, three. Um, I don't see any. Dennis was here. He yeah, I know. <laughs> well, he just stopped in, but he, you know, he's got his application, his event permit, December 1. Yeah. Um, so, all right, so we're going to move that. Okay. Those to the consensus agenda. I keep thinking I'm forgetting something here. Here they are. Since I've been doing most of the talking tonight, I'm going to give this Too to patty. our speed reader. Yes! Okay, town board announcements for November 7th, 2019.
again, all these things will be on the town website with further information if you miss something I say or if I mumble. <coughs> <laughs> and here they are. The Town of Somers Veterans Day Parade will be hosted by the Somers Lions Monday, 11-11. The parade will start here at the townhouse at 10-30, and at the ceremony will be at the cemetery at 11. Refreshments to follow. The Town of Sober Somers Bulk Refuge Drop-Off is underway and it will end on November 16th. So anybody who can wants to take advantage of that, please do so at the Somers Transfer Station. Northeast Westchester Rotary Club coat drive is fully in effect. It actually ends tomorrow. So if anybody has coats, Ooh. please bring them to the townhouse, the library, post offices, Kennedy Catholic, Somers Middle School, the high school, Acne and Golden's Bridge, Mobile, and Somers CVS. Samaritan's Purse, Operation Ch uh, Christmas Child, is packing up shoe t is collecting packed up shoe boxes with items to send over worldwide. Yeah, it's, it's here. In, in <coughs> United States and worldwide to children who are in need of oh. some Christmas cheer. All right, just a word about that. Um, yeah, it says here on the on the flyer. They take a shoe box, and if you have one, you can do it yourself. You fill it up with uh, school supplies, uh, maybe little toys, anything that would fit in the shoe box, and then they collect them all and they ship them worldwide. And uh, I've been doing this the last couple of years, and then you, you, you get a note back from the child that receives it, which is uh, it's pretty cool. So if you don't have a shoe box, um, you can go online, and they will fill a shoebox for you. Okay. So that's pretty cool. St. Luke's Christmas Holiday Bazaar, I'm oh, sorry, St. Luke's Church Holiday Bazaar is going to be Saturday, November 23rd from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Hundreds of Christmas decorations and gifts at St. Luke's Church. And last but not least, Somers Track and Field Booster Club's first annual turkey trot will be held Thanksgiving evening. November 28th, 8 a.m. will be the 5K, 9 a.m. will be the one mile fun run. And this is all happening at the high school and you can sign up online at runnerssignup.com. <laughs> and it uh, uh, opens through, oh, registration is open through November 26th and so on the same day at the site. Thank you. Okay, our next meeting will be uh, November 14th, uh, right here, uh, 7 p.m. Uh, any closing comments by board members or issues? Uh, just one. Uh, two days ago, of course, was election day, and thank you to Somers for having such a very high turnout. High turnout. In what is considered an off election year mm -hmm. and congratulations to all our winners uh, limited but not in, uh, but not limited to our supervisor our deputy supervisor our councilman clinching our town clerk our two judges Timon and McDermott congratulations to one and all and our new highway supervisor thank you yes thank you right. thanks Nick DeVito thank you mm. yeah. Yeah. Monday so starts the high school basketball so season <laughs> Section also, one also football playoffs this right. weekend. <laughs> and basketball starts on Monday. Yeah. I don't know. I just okay. Um, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. <laughs> Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. And good night, Somers. <laughs>